Here's a good one. Should I kick my neighbor's ass? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Generally speaking, We're yes. We're going to go with yes. Uh, hey, Bill, love the is podcast. Is that what time it is? No, yeah. that's East Coast. Oh, okay. Uh, that's why people bitch where the fuck is a podcast. Um, I need some advice on what to do about the guy. this guy who lives in a few houses down from me. I'm a third-year college student, and I live at home. My parents moved uh, to go live in the state above mine. You mean north? And I currently <laughs> reside... <laughs> Uh, alone while they are trying to sell the house. A few months ago, I was driving home, coming back from a gym, and while I was driving in my neighborhood, I saw this guy step in the middle of the road about 20 yards from my car. He was yelling something at me, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. I slowed down and stopped my car right in front of him, and he came to my window and told me to get out. I was totally confused and thought I'd run over, I thought I ran over his cat or something. Also, I think he just moved in because I'd never seen the dude in my life. So I rolled down the window and asked, what did you say? He goes, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. Get out of the car. This guy's probably in his 40s and has to be around 5'10". Is, is this me? Um, 250 pounds. That's not me. No. I'm 21, 6'3", 200. I do CrossFit, and I wrestle occasionally at another gym I go to. So I get out of the car, and I'm standing there trying to figure out what the hell is going on. The guy starts moving towards me, so I take the initiative and take a step towards him. We end up being an inch from each other. And he's trying to do some alpha male shit by just staring at me. But I have the height advantage, so I'm looking down at him. At least 10 seconds go by before the guy goes, how fast do you think you were going back there? I say, I don't know, probably around 30. The speed limit in my neighborhood is 20. And I know I wasn't going that much over it. Then he goes, I'm not going to have my children playing in the yard if I know assholes like you are driving like that in the neighborhood. After uh, he said that, I saw his wife and son were a little off to the side of the road. Once the word asshole left his mouth, I was fucking pissed. I wanted to just tackle the dick and put him to sleep in front of his wife and kid to teach him a lesson. <laughs> but I pussied out and just apologized to him and said that I was really sorry, sorry and it wouldn't happen again. The guy then gives me a fucking little smirk and turns around and says, while walking away with his back turned, it better not or you know what will happen. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, away. you definitely should have kicked his ass. You should have kicked his ass. Yeah. What a fuck. Do you realize? Yeah. What a good. Do you realize what this kid did? He's such a fucking gentleman. He could have kicked the fucking shit out of this yeah. guy. He saw his wife and kid there. It would have been emasculating. Yep. His dad is Superman. He sits there. You know what it is? It's that little smirk. Yeah. That fucking smirk. I bet that cunt steals from work. Yeah. I bet he does. Sorry, dude. That's the first time. I, I literally had to walk away. You fucking cunt. Yeah, you should have kicked that guy's ass. But it's a good. I, you know, I suppose uh, it's good that you didn't do it, but because you were the bigger is, person, as they say. But he definitely has it coming. <laughs> this. Then he writes. Now after that, that shit, I wanted to explode. I mean, the guy totally disrespect me. So I get in my car and drive off. End of story. Wrong. I couldn't get this fucking guy out of my head. I, I, dude, I can't get it out of my head. I'm gonna actually fantasize that I was there and he did that. What I would want to do. I've already. You know what I would fucking do? I would wait till he was alone. Don't do this shit. Don't do this. But I know what you just want to get a, get the guy alone and be like, hey, what are you going to do now? Huh? What are you going to do now? And just get right in his fucking grill and have him back down. Yeah. Or I, I, I would almost just say to the guy, say, hey, listen, man, just call him over to the car and just say, listen, I just wanted you to know the other day that if I wanted to, I could have fucking stuffed you in my trunk, <laughs> tied you up like a fucking pretzel and ass raped you in front of your fucking wife. <laughs> but I chose not to. Okay, because I didn't want your son to know what a little fucking, f I can't say it, mm -hmm. pussy yeah. he has for it. That wouldn't have been homophobic either. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mean me talking about gay people. That's such a fucking pussy move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if for some reason, but, but, I'm, but I'm, no, then that's what you say. Maybe do it like Columbo. Just say, listen, man, I got to ask you something. Because I'm six foot three. I crossfit. I wrestle. Okay. And just looking at you, I know I could tie you into a pretzel. I know I could do it if I wanted to. But the confidence you had, I just want to know, what, what is your background? You know? Because, you know, I'm a real competitive guy. You know, if you got some sort of martial arts training, you know, if you, I would love to have you. Why don't, why don't you come down to the gym sometime when your wife and kid aren't there so I don't have to feel guilty when I <laughs> fuck you up and close both your eyes with this one and this friend over here. <laughs> what, is the, uh, what does the rest of the thing say? I don't even need not, to read it. It's not, but it's not over, though. I, I know because this, what, what's happening now, this is what happens when you do the right thing in life, okay? When, you know, you, you, it, it eats away at you. You have to make peace. 
You have to make peace, and you, and you got to tell yourself the lie that someday this guy's going to get his. And you know what? He doesn't. Guys like this don't get theirs. Oh, that's smart. I can, this, kid, this kid really painted a fucking picture. I can, this is driving me nuts. He goes, I couldn't get this guy out of my head. A week went by, and I was still thinking about that asshole. Dude, I would think about this guy 20 years from now. Two weeks later, I was driving home from school, and I see the guy rolling his garbage can out to the curb. I slow down to fucking under 20. And I know this because I look down at my speedometer. I pretend to stare the guy down, so I look at him, and he looks at me and yells, Slow down! <laughs> wow. Now, when he said that, I am fucking raging. I wanted to stop my car and do some ground and pound on his face. Yeah, this kid knows what he's doing. This isn't wrestling. Like This kid's doing UFC shit. But did I? No. I just drove off like a fag. <laughs> the next day, I talked to my friend about it, about what had happened, and he said that this guy said the same shit to him. If he said it, he would have put him on his ass. I know. You, dude, you know what I would have done? He told me that uh, if he says he's going to kick your ass, then that's a threat so you can defend yourself. Don't listen to your dumb friend. He's saying you won't get arrested. So a few months have passed, and I'm still thinking about this asshole every time I drive by his house. Fast forward uh, to yesterday, and I'm, I'm biking in my neighborhood. Listen to an IHOP, and I hear a honk from behind me. So I pull my bike over to the side of the road, and it's none other than the same dude in his Ford F-150 driving along, and he looks at me and gives me the middle fucking finger. Wow. Now, granted, I was in the middle of the road and didn't hear the guy coming because I was listening to music, but still the middle finger. So I bike home, take a shower, and try to convince myself to walk over to the dude's house and confront him. But after a couple minutes of pacing, I just decide to wait it out until the asshole does one more thing. I mean, I don't want to get arrested. So my question is, what the hell should I do? I mean, every time I drive by this guy's house now, I want to fucking veer off the road and ram my car into the middle of his living room. Any advice would be good. Uh, all of my friends think I should go over there, but I want a second opinion. Um... Uh, you can't do anything to this guy. Unless he puts his hands on you Unless first. he puts his hands on you. you this is just one anything. of these things. But you can do to him what he's doing to you. This guy has an insane temper. So, uh, you know, I'm not advocating legally, so you don't do this. But, like, um, I, I don't know what I would next time, you know, if you see him out in the yard or something. This is what you do. I have a great idea. Do you have any friends who are really good mechanically? Um, why don't you take your credit card out, go down to the fucking auto store or whatever, or go online and buy like one of those fucking train horns and have it installed in your car. And next time you drive down the street, just be sort of zigzagging down the street just to get this guy to be fucking, you know, getting all like, oh, what the fuck? And the second he starts screaming, you lay on that fucking horn as loud as humanly possible and you blow out his eardrums. <laughs> That's what I would. But then again, then the, no one douche like this, he would say that I have permanent hearing damage. You know what I think you should do? Maybe because I'm a female and I'm all about psychological, Revenge. Okay. psychological warfare. What should, you, what should you do? I think when the husband is not home, I don't know if, how he, if he knows his schedule or whatever, he needs to go over there when the wife is at home and be like, listen, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry about that time that I was speeding. I really, you know, but your, your husband seems really upset. I'm really not trying to be like that. I would never do anything like that. And women are like, oh, no, 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 because she knows her husband is a psycho. Right. And like, I mean, she could turn around and be like, yeah, you shouldn't do that either. But I have a feeling she's not like that. And he can just go over and just make nice and be like the sweet kid that's helping out. Or, oh, do you need me to take the barrels nah, out? He needs you? vengeance. And then, but then that, I feel like maybe that would fuck with the husband. And he's like sitting there sipping tea with the, the wife. And, oh, look who came over. He just wanted to apologize in person. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know you know what's a great thing to that. do? Is, is, and is, then is, fuck the wife. There you go. <laughs> No, yeah. no, 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 no. He should fuck his wife. <laughs> he should fuck his he wife. He should play with his kid in the backyard, like toss the football around with him. Be more no, of like, you know, like the, the big thing. brother you, you he can't, never had. You can't do. There's nothing like just start <laughs> giving him, him the finger. Listen, this is the deal. All you got to do is just give him the finger. Give him the finger right back, because uh, this guy thinks you're a bitch right now. So all you got to do is, you know, you can just yell back. Just say, you know, just give him the finger. Yell back at him. When he's in the driveway, I would like swerve at him. And then swerve back. Just fuck with the guy. He's not, I mean, just do that once because the next time you might have like a video camera. But um, uh, I, I just don't want to get any – I don't get any – you know what? If I was in that situation, uh, dude, you know what I would do? Yeah. Oh, um, Monday morning quarterback. Look, when I was in that situation with that other guy, right? Yeah. At the last place we lived, and I didn't fuck with him because he was an old guy. I just didn't fuck with him. And yeah. now we found out he has dementia and all this shit. So I'm psyched. I never yelled at the guy. 
You know what you do now? You know what's, what really diffuses angry guys like that or makes them even more angry? is just laugh at them. Just keep laughing at them. Laugh at them, give them the finger, and just keep calling them tough guy. All right, they're tough guy. Anything, anything, you just keep calling them anything that is remotely, all right, there, Chuck Norris, anything you want to say to this guy that will bait him into hitting you. This is a really a fuck, this is a great question, and I don't want to get in trouble if some shit goes down. <laughs> so you shouldn't do anything, sir, wink, wink, wink. Um, this guy's such a dick. I, I, I always say, you know, fucking with somebody's car is like a pussy move, but this guy's such a dick, and he has like such a... Uh, Oh, my God. Dude, how many times have you thought about throat to just choke slamming that guy right into the hood of your car repeatedly? When you as said, his wife I can stuff cry. you into my trunk, bend you like a pretzel, and ass rape you in front yeah. of your wife. No, but if you just said it really calmly, <laughs> if you said it calmly with sort of a smile on your face, you come off like a fucking maniac. Yeah, that's true. If you scream that at somebody, you just sound like you're quoting, like, you know, Hulk Hogan or something, right? Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> come this Saturday. I'm going to bend you into a pretzel and ass rape you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can't get laid. Uh, Bill, I'm a huge fan. I listen to all your podcasts and stand-up. Now that I'm done sucking your dick. I love how you guys just can't give me a fucking compliment. And then you feel all uncomfortable because you actually enjoy the, comp uh, the the fucking podcast. Just be a man and give me a goddamn compliment. You know? Uh, I'm done sucking your dick. You're uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable. I enjoy the praise. He says, I need some advice. I'm starting my sophomore year of college, and I've never been more depressed. My high school girlfriend broke up with me shortly after graduation, and I haven't gotten laid since. Uh, it's not like I stay in my room all day. I have friends and I go to parties at least once a week. And even though I never enjoy, even though I never enjoy myself, I just can't get a girl to be interested in me. I also have no idea what I want to do after college. And so I have no motivation to apply myself. The only reason I haven't dropped out is because my parents who are paying thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, I don't drop out so they won't be disappointed. I work out every day and I try to stay busy, but most of the time I just feel terrible. I'm hoping you have some advice for me. If not, go fuck yourself. And if you do, thanks and go fuck yourself. All right. Um, well, you obviously have a sense of humor. Um, what would my advice be? Uh, you know what? I think you're trying too hard. All right. There's no reason to, to go to a party and not have a good time. Just go there and enjoy yourself. Don't worry about talking to women. Don't worry about trying to get laid. Just have a good time. Just enjoy yourself. Just go out in life and just fucking enjoy yourself. Okay. People are attractive to positive energy and somebody having a good time. It makes them want to be around you. And next thing you know, somebody's blowing you. I don't understand why the universe works that way, but it does. I know I am overly simplifying this, but, um, you know, it's good that you know that you're depressed. I was depressed for about 20 years and didn't realize it because I was so used to feeling that way. I thought it was just the normal, you know, just the normal state of things. Um, I got to tell you this, dude. You are going to get a girlfriend, and you're going to find love, and you're going to get married, okay? But I got to tell you, there's a fucking misery that comes to that life, all right? There's a great thing, but there's also a misery, and she feels it fucking too, and that's a part of you. You're, the individual you dies. So right now, dude, you are, the 40-year-old you is going to look back at the fuck. If the 40-year-old you could get in a time machine and sit down with you right now, and give you a fucking pregame speech before you went to that party? I mean, that would be like scared straight. He'd be right in your face. You know, you have any idea what it's like to get up at 5 in the morning and change a shitty diaper? You get to sleep 10 hours a fucking day? You can't put a smile on your face when you go to a fucking party? Single? You can fuck anything that walks? You go down to that 7-Eleven. Look at me! You go down to that 7-Eleven, you get yourself a box of fucking condoms. You stick them, you stick one in your pocket. Prepare for success! You iron your goddamn shirt, you get down there, you have a good fucking time. All right? You're only going to be this age once. He say something like that. All right? I'm telling you. You're only going to be this age once. You're in college, dude. You are at, like, you, you're, it's like... You won the NBA draft lottery. Women there are in the prime of their fucking life. Most of them are fucking single. It's going to happen for you. But if you're walking around and you're depressed and you're carrying that with you, if you're moping around, like that, that makes people fucking, you know, not want to be around you. So I would say drinking is probably not a good thing because that is a depressant. 
So scratch that. I can't even remember if I fucking told you to, to, to have a couple of beers. I wouldn't do that. I would just fucking enjoy yourself. I almost, you know what I would do? I would go do some shit for you. Fuck trying to get a girlfriend. Fuck trying to get laid. Fuck all of that. Just go out and, what do you want to do? If you don't know what you want to do, go out and go try a bunch of different things and have a good time. Dude, you're single. Okay? You don't have to fucking, you don't have to fucking deal with trying to figure out what's going to make them happy. Okay? Because as far as I can fucking tell, there isn't anything that's going to make them happy for a longer than maybe a day. The amount of shit that you can do for them, and as you can tell, she's a couple of rooms away. The amount of shit that you can fucking do for them, and all it does is buy you a couple of days of happiness, is just fucking baffling. And I got to be honest with you, a lot of women look at it, guys, and they think that we're fucking stupid. And I think part of it is because they have a, the way their brain works, that multitasking, whatever it is that shit talk that they always say, you know, that women can multitask and guys can't. Well, I would say generally speaking, this is very general. I think men have an advantage when it comes to just being happy. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't know if my podcast and the way I talk and shit, but I'm happy. As, I'm happy as hell. And I've been happy for a long fucking time. You know? All I need, dude, I'll, this is all I fucking need. The NFL package, I got a six of fucking Millers in my, in my goddamn refrigerator. You know? I got a new pair of sneakers. It's just some stupid bullshit like that. I order a fucking pizza. That's all I need. I'm happy the whole fucking day. You know? I go on a hike with my dog in the morning. That's it. I'm good. Simple. Simple, stupid shit. Keeps... Me as a guy entertained. I don't have their high level brain that they're always talking about and their ability. I like to do a thousand fucking things. Yeah, look at you. You're miserable. You're fucking miserable. So I'm telling you, dude, you're actually, you don't realize it, but where you are right now, dude, is you are in an absolute utopia. Do you know how many fucking guys right now would kill to be in your position? They'd even take two years of not getting laid. Who gives a fuck? Rub one out. Get on with your goddamn day. You know? Get on with your fucking day of being single, not having the answer to anybody, and having the option of hitting on any beautiful woman that catches your eye. Take a trip anytime you fucking want. Go wherever you want to go. Do whatever the fuck. Dude, you're never going to get... And your parents are paying for your fucking education, dude. You, you, you're never going to be freer. All right? So start looking at your life that way. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a different fucking vibe. And I, I'm, I, I, you know, and I'll tell you right now, you start doing that, good things are going to happen in the National Football League. No, I'm serious, dude. Something good is going to happen. But there will be a time in your fucking life, I'm telling you, where you will be married, you'll have kids, and you'll do that whole fucking thing. And that will be its own sort of utopia. But it's, it's, I don't dude, this is a very, it's a beautiful, selfish time in your life that you should embrace. And you should not, uh, you should not spend it feeling bad about yourself. All right? So there you go. Good luck to you. All in. Dear Billy Brainfart, back in December 2012, I was enlisted in the United States Air Force. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, flying high into the sky, and we dive. That's all I know. Because that's all they play in the movies, right? Da -da 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 that's just the credits. <laughs> Nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. How about a stronger Air Force? I'll tell you right now, they won the championship. They feel like they're unstoppable, and that's the kind of thing that ends up getting you shot down out of the sky. You have to feel the weak side pressure of the third world countries. I mean, planes are disappearing. Who's to say that these people don't have these things? All right. Um, despite being engaged... Oh, wait a second. I got engaged... Oh, yeah, the guy joins the fucking Air Force, all right? He enlisted. I got engaged to what I thought was the lady of my dreams. Life was good. Unfortunately, I got stationed out of state and had to move. Despite being engaged, she opted to stay behind in what was supposed to be temporary. We managed to keep the spark alive for some time until she lost the engagement ring in April 2013. All right, let's stop right there. Guys are morons, and a man can lose a fucking ring. 
All right. The only way a woman can lose a ring is if she's cleaning it near a sink. Okay. And she doesn't understand plumbing and then later turns on the water and sends it through the J-trap. All right. He's going to feel the weak side pressure on the J-trap on fourth down situations. Um, when a woman loses a ring, <laughs> you got to understand, like, this is, that's so many of them. That's the thing. The ring. They get to fucking stick it under their fucking girlfriend's noses. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Right? They live for that. It's like you getting a game-worn jersey. All right, so she lost the fucking engagement ring. Wow. Eventually, things spiraled out of control, and she left me in June of 2013 saying I deserved better. All right, well, that means either she doesn't love herself, and, uh, like, when I, saying that you deserve better, what I would immediately think is that she, if a woman ever said that to me, that it's like, all right, you fucked around on me, and how many times? Uh, anyways, this put me in a huge state of depression to which I credit your podcast for helping me out. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, come to find out she banged, oh, she banged four different guys from June to August. There you go. And those are just the ones she admitted to. Okay. That's like when you come home buzzed or drunk in high school and your parents go, how many beers have you had? How many, what do you say? Two. If you're really shit faced, you'll say four. And she said four. So what does that mean? She had a 12 pack of dick. All right. In August, she came back into my life after she said she went. She, too, went through a depression. She was living even further away now, but still wanted to try and make things work some type of way. Finally, February of this year, I got the chance we were waiting on. I went house hunting. Ooh, Jesus, dude, what are you doing? Where she lived in an att attempt to make things right. Come to find out she had been banging a married guy with kids and also talking to someone else, telling me. Wait, and also talking to someone else while telling me she wanted me. I confronted her and she basically said all I'll ever be to her is a fucking FaceTime friend. What? You confronted her and she said all and she said all I'll ever be to her is a fucking FaceTime friend. A week ago she called me and now she wants to be friends again. I love this girl. That is your problem, sir. That is the only reason why you're writing me because everything you're saying this is a joke, your decision. He goes, I love this girl very much despite what she's done to me. Kind of like eating sugar. It's good, but it fucks you in the long run. My question to you is, do I throw all my chips in this time or do I fold? And yes, I'm probably an idiot. Either way, thanks for the laughs and go fuck yourself. P.S. Do a show in Mississippi already. Jesus Christ, Bill. That's on my bucket list. I'm going to do one down there. Um, all right. Here's the deal, dude. This is the deal. Your heart is clouding your brain right now. All right, and uh, here's a great expression that somebody said that their therapist told them one time. They said, I don't let chaos live in my life. All right, this is the deal, okay? Um, she has come from some sort of unhealthy fucking background where she feels that, yeah, she's got some sort of low self-esteem thing, I'm guessing. She just thinks that she's a piece of shit and probably doesn't deserve a great guy like you. So she deliberately went out and sabotaged it, probably because she's used to being around a bunch of dysfunctional fucking people. So when she actually found somebody outside of her wheelhouse, she ran back to the, the comfort of that dysfunctional horse shit. All right? That is not your fucking problem. Okay? When you're trying to find the person that you're supposed to fucking be with, you have to find somebody that is as right as rain. All right. That's why you ask the questions. Are your parents still together? Uh, what are your relationship? Like all the red flags, both for men and women, listen to this thing. Okay. If they have issues with their fucking parents and they don't fucking speak to them and they have a lot of anger issues towards their family, fucking walk, walk. All right. If you're young, you're drafting in the first round. Okay. Okay. That's the Des Bryant pick like fucking Bill Belichick. He passed on that one. And everyone's like, dude, what are you talking about? That's a fucking 10. And look at him. Not saying the dude isn't a 10. Not saying he's not a world-class fucking athlete. But all the, the baggage that comes with that horseshit. You got to look at it like that. So what you need to do is, you know, all right, you want to compare it to sugar? You want to get over your sugar addiction? Just go cold turkey. All right? Six days fucking in. Okay? You're going to start to turn, and you're going to be looking at candy and cake and pies going why the fuck would I ever eat that? Because it's out of your system. 
And that's how you're going to look at her. Why the fuck would I ever eat that? Yeah. Dude, that's not the mother of your kids, man. You know, that right there is a Hank Williams song waiting to be written if you marry her and you have kids with her. All right? I mean, dude, that, that, that's the kind of woman that could turn you into a fucking alcoholic. Uh, you need to walk away. All right? And you know what? You live in Mississippi, so you understood that fucking Hank Williams reference. All right? Walk away and, uh, and stay single for a while until you get that craving out of you. Because it's not fair for you to get into another relationship with that shit there. And you probably want to, Bill, how do you know all this shit? Because I'm a fucking piece of shit and I've done it. I've been, like, all of these, all of these questions, I've been both people. I've been the person that fucked around. I've been the person that got fucked around on. I made horrible fucking decisions and all of that shit. And it wasn't until I finally fucking decided to, uh, you know, stop surrounding myself with fucking people that reminded me of people that I grew up with. And actually tried to create... A winning culture in the locker room. Um, so that's what you need to do. You need to uh, you need to draft character first. All right. There's plenty of beautiful women that came from wonderful families, and those that, oh, that's the one that's the keeper. All right. I know what the sh okay, a woman like this is fucking your brains out. I know she is. Okay, and that's the sugar right there. Okay, so you got to let that go. All right. Here's the deal. Next time you, you're thinking about calling her, rub one out. I'm dead serious. Fucking rub one out. And the second you're done, I bet as you're orgasm, you're gonna this you're gonna be like, oh thank God I didn't call her. That's what's gonna happen. All right, and remember that thought. Okay, X won't sell house. Dear Bill, big fan. Met you in Jacksonville a while back. I have a quick question for you. My ex fiance and I were together for four and a half years. Why the fuck did you buy a house with somebody you're not married to? All right, uh, that, that doesn't help you. But for anybody listening, do not buy a house. Do not live with somebody you're not going to marry. Do not buy a house with somebody you're not going to, if you're not married, don't do that shit. Anyways, during the relationship, she, re, she remained loyal while I was deployed to the Middle East. And upon my return, I used my saved up money to buy a house with her near the beach. Oh, my God, if this fucking woman is, is going to somehow make a claim to your house that you bought with your serving for our country, putting your life on the line money, this would be a new level of whoredom. Is that a new word, I think? Uh, whoredom. All right. That might not even be, I know it's a new word, but that might not be the proper usage of it already, which would be very uh, apropos for the type of fucking moron I am. All right, hang on a second. Where the hell am I? Okay, it was her dream house, and I felt that if the deployment didn't ruin us, that nothing would. Well, I was wrong. We decided to split, and I tried to be amicable. Did I say that right? And let her keep the house if she could pay me the closing cost of about eight grand. This is what guys do. They just want to cut bait and fucking leave. Women got that fucking, they burrow in. She agreed. All right. Why did you do that? She agreed, and I moved. You bought the fucking house. Did she kick in for it? Maybe I'm being too hard on her. I don't know. She agreed, and I moved back home to New Jersey to start a new life. It's been nearly a year, and she has stalled every effort to get this resolved. When a contract was finally in place, she decided it needed some amendments to protect herself. That basically left me with less money than we agreed, and getting her a house worth 150 grand for 8,000 bucks. Dude, I swear to fucking God, if I read one more of these fucking stories, all right, if you're some fucking woman, all right, and you, you host one of these shows where you're always talking about the shit that men do. How about you balance it out? The way I balanced it out saying that Luchich did a piece of shit fucking move. Why don't you bring this shit up? This is ridiculous. He goes, I threw out the contract and contract, contacted a realtor to list the house. There you go. She's refused to sell. And her name is on the title because I'm a fucking idiot. Long story short, after I threatened a lawsuit, a mysterious man who called himself a family friend emailed me and asked to act as the facilitator for the deal between the two of us. My ex... Dude, don't give in to that. My ex has not been involved since, and this guy is a real cunt who is only out for her. My cousin, who is a lawyer, is guiding me through the process, but I need some advice from you on how to resolve this issue. I just found out that the family friend is my new ex's new boyfriend. I could have told you that. My question is, how do I let them know that I know? I'm like a serial killer who needs to be caught. What? I'm like a serial killer who needs to be caught her man. 
caught here, man. What? Typo there. I can't resist them thinking I don't, I guess, know anymore. I thought a nice joke about her having herpes would be a good start. I joked that she was too selfish to even give me that. Any feedback or advice on the podcast would really be appreciated. Um, I usually say cut bait, but fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Uh, You have two options here. And I don't want to tell you what the second one is. Uh, The first one is, well, you have three. Fight this, which I would walk away from it, which I wouldn't. And number three uh, would involve a convenient accident that happened to the house. <laughs> but even then, then she'd probably fight you for the, uh, ah, okay, they'd figure out you started the fire. Don't, don't, I shouldn't have even brought that up. Listen, this is what you got to do. You just got to accept the fact that you're in for a long fight here and that lawyers are going to get most of the money, but that bitch is not going to get the house. Now, to go that route. Oh, God. I don't want to tell you to quit. But my world, I would just be like, look, you want a $150,000 fucking dollar house, just take the fucking house. Free and clear. Um, it costs you hundred fifty grand to get rid of this fucking devil woman that's going to take that new guy down. She's going to take that guy down. This, I mean, granted, I only heard your side of the story, all right, and I'm taking this as the truth. And if this is the truth, that that that's not the that's not. You, you don't want that devil woman in your fucking life. That is some evil fucking shit. Um. Uh, okay, I got to walk away from this story because it's it's actually making me fucking mad, and I don't have a dog in the fight here. What I'm doing is I am inserting myself into the story. Who I would be in this fucking story? Oof. Oh, Jesus, dude. You're young. You're young. (laughs) Get into the best shape of your life. Hit on women out of your fucking league and then treat her like a fucking queen. Marry her and then walk by this bitch someday on the street. That's that's what I would do. All right. Oh, you fucking cunt. Girlfriend cheating on her diet. Uh, What up, Billy Retnob? I don't like this person. Um, Why? You don't like that delivery? No, that's actually pretty funny. Girlfriend cheating dot, dot, dot on her diet. On her diet. That sounds like a gay guy wrote that. On her diet. Um, <laughs> Ridiculous. Scandalous. Um, I'm 27 years old and have a girlfriend of six years whom I live with. When we first got together, she had a sexy athletic body. That all changed last year when she got promoted and started working long hours in a high-stress position. Uh, she began smoking weed almost every night, claiming it helped her relax after a hard day's work. Yeah, man. She also started eating like <laughs> shit. Lots of, lots of fast food, larger portions, etc. She's probably 60 to 70 pounds heavier than when we first met. And on her 5'3 frame, it fucking shows, man. After ignoring my subtle... That would show on a 6 foot frame. After, my, after ignoring my probably subtle... Probably 60 to 70 pounds heavier. After ignoring my subtle hints for the last year... I finally sat her down last month and said enough is enough. She needs to make an effort to get healthier. I did everything to support her in losing weight. I paid for an expensive supplement program that her co-workers recommended. I started making her healthy lunches every day to take to work. When she'd get home from work, I'd have a healthy dinner ready for her on the table. I even paid for a new gym membership and bought her a new bicycle. Today, I found a hidden cache of fast food wrappers in the garage. This led me to believe to look at her bank statements from the last month. She's been picking up fast food on her way home from work nearly every day since we talked. This sounds like a Biggest Loser story. Not only that, she'd also buy fast food at lunches sometimes too, suggesting that she was tossing the lunches I made her in the trash. This really pissed me off. I'm a guy who takes care of my body and want a woman who does the same. She's only 24 and hasn't had children. She shouldn't have a beer gut, jowls, and saggy tits. The f- oh, you were so in the pocket. You're so I want to fucking take your computer and throw it out the goddamn window. <laughs> can you please finish the rest of this so I can go off on this asshole? Please, just finish it because I swear to fucking God. I, I swear to God. I think he's making a lot of good points. He, oh my God. <laughs> the fact that I spent... Oh my God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, and don't, so don't scream too, fu- so too close angry. to the computer. I, don't, sorry, I can't, sorry, I can't sorry, use sorry, a uh, mixer this week. The fact that I spent all this money and effort on her only to have her sabotage it and hide it from me makes me seriously call our relationship into question. 
What would you do in my situation? Oh my God, Nia's taking off her shoes. Oh my God, you know what? You know what? You hey, shallow. Hey, hey, we have to be quiet. I know, I know, I know. And you know what? You shallow, just bullshit fucking asshole guy who wrote this letter. Let me explain something to you right now. You think you care about her health? You don't care about her health. You certainly don't care about her state of mind. All you care about is whether or not your girlfriend's hot enough. What, for, for you, for your friends, for society? You don't give a shit. You said yourself, she's got this job, she's stressed out, and so she's stress eating. That's what a lot of people do, okay? And you're sitting here, you seem like you were well-intentioned, right? But now, it seems like you're just being fucking shallow because you don't care. You don't care about anything that's going on inside of her, physically or, or mentally or emotionally. All you care about is what she looks like. And now, you're mad because she's, like, hiding it from you and you're calling to question her relationship. You've been with her for six years no, and you're going to call into question her relationship how she feels about you because she's going through something emotional why don't you talk to her about how she feels instead of trying to put a band-aid on the problem and making it seem like you care when you obviously don't give a shit okay I you're a something. shallow superficial douchebag and she should dump your ass and get hot even hotter than when and she's 24 minutes wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute a wait a minute time up time up time up now how would she go about getting even hotter by losing 60 to 70 pounds no you know what she could get hotter by finding a guy who's making more money and who's nicer and like a, just a better So person. she should become a gold digging fat whore? <laughs> no, no. Wait a minute, no. wait a minute. Now listen, listen. Here's the deal. Forget her even Time out. Way. You're being she too hot. I'm going to tell you right now. You're she being... just dump you. No, 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 no. No. Yeah, you're being... You mean she had a better body when she Time was out. a teenager than, than she was when she started to get into like her... Time out. What a surprise. Time out. That's unbelievable. Time that out. That happens. Oh my God. When people get older and have like grown up responsibilities. That's that's really crazy how that happens, sir. You 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 hit you hit the. You, and you've got what like a six pack and a full head of hair, and you're just like the hottest guy ever, right? And that's not going to change for you maybe in ten years if you go through something and you're having a hard time, and the person that you supposedly love and cares about you and has been with you for six years Jeez. just decides to what toss you aside because you gained some weight. Fuck All right, you. Wait a minute. Okay, time out. Okay, can I defend this guy a little of bit course, here? Of course, sure. That's what you do. You defend the assholes who write into you. So go ahead. Well, you know, I can't bite the hand that feeds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not defending this guy just to defend this guy. Okay, first of all, you're ignoring the fact that this guy, he sat down with her in a nice way. Okay, in a caring way. Nia, to be five foot three and put on 60 to 70 pounds, you're setting yourself up for heart disease and you're going to die. And this guy, she hasn't even had kids yet. Okay, time out, time out. And she has to go through all of that, which you know, Nia, okay, you, you, they, that's, that's already hard enough as it. She's only 24 years old. You should not be 60 to 70 pounds. Nia, 30 pounds overweight is obese. This girl is, is two times, on her way to three times at 24. She's blowing out her body, and she's, she's never going to be in shape again. And she's going to live a miserable fucking life because, a very difficult life because of it. She's going to blow out her knees. I'm telling you, all of this shit is going to come. And this guy, he did not sit down and say, hey, you used to be hot, and now you're not. He He's sat, time out. No, he isn't. No, he is. Time out. Time out. He sat down with her like an adult and said that, basically, I'm concerned about you. Um... You know, we said, I love you. I'm concerned about you. I want to help you get healthier. This guy is making lunches for her. He's paying for a gym. He's doing all of this stuff. And in the end, when he's trying to help her out, and then she's going behind his, her, his back eating, which she's doing it out of a shame thing, he felt betrayed, and then the anger comes out, and then that's when he says, beer gut jowls and saggy tits. Okay, now this is the thing, Nia. Like, it's unnecessary for him to like put it like, I, I understand what you're saying. Okay, well, he has to, right. because he can't say that to her, and he can't get, he has to get his anger out, or he has to make a fucking joke, he has to do something. And yeah, this guy's also 27 years old, he says he keeps himself in fucking shape, which, you know something, that's not fair to your partner, it's not fair to your partner to go out and put on that kind of weight, okay? If, she's 24 years old, though, she can bounce back, it's not like she's 44, she's 24. Okay, like it's, I know it's, it's hard to lose that kind of weight, of course, but she can do it. But I'm just saying, like, I'm not, why can't he like, be more say... emotional? He's, he's doing all the stuff where you like do all like the physical stuff, but he seems like he's incapable of being like emotionally supportive. That's to not her what are you talking about? He was, he was in the beginning, he was in the beginning, he did this. What he's doing in the end is he's talking to me, guy to guy. Mm -hmm. She's 24 years old, hasn't even had kids, she shouldn't have a beer gut jowls and saggy tits. You know, what he, he's coming at her like a football coach. Well, she doesn't need a football coach. He she didn't needs a say boyfriend it to her. He, he didn't loves. say it to her. He said it to me.
suggesting she was tossing the lunches I made her in the trash. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows if she might have. She might have just. She's probably like, eating them both. She's probably eating them both. Right. What would you do in my situation? That helped this fucking guy out. He seems like he's keeping himself in shape. He's be, he's actually a great boyfriend. If he was a dick, he would have said, "I'm breaking up with you because you have a beer gut and jowls." He didn't. He tried to help her with the fucking problem. Guys, problem solve, okay? Help this guy connect with her emotionally. So, I mean, look, she's got this high-stress fucking job, but, like, at some point, you know, you got to settle into the stress of your job or you have to get a new fucking job, but this is what it's doing to you, all right? And, yeah, i got to tell you, you get 60 to 70 pounds overweight at 24 fucking years of age, what's going to happen at 34? And, yeah, that is a legitimate question. It's a legitimate question because that weight thing is, you know, it starts happening. People die, Mia. Not to bring up a bad I fucking mean, subject. I mean, yeah, you're really like, you're kind of like taking it to the extreme, though. I mean... But, Mia, if, uh, if you're going to think about being with somebody for the rest of their life, you're going to have kids with this person, they're already this much overweight, they're not going to be, be there. They're not going to fucking be there. All right, fine. Maybe I went too far when I was calling him an asshole and all that kind of stuff. Man, I think you had a normal reaction because acting out of yeah, of, it's it's it's, it's, it's that anthem. last it's that last thing. You know what I mean? Because you know what you're right. Everything that he says he's doing in terms of making her healthy meals and buying her bike and the gym membership, that's all well and good. And maybe that's this is the part about men and women that's difficult because yes, you guys try to problem solve. You don't try to connect on an emotional level and say like no, you bury the emotions right and you go to the gym <laughs> exactly where like where it sounds like what she needs she needs to blow off steam and a lot of people do they they eat they drink they smoke weed they do other drugs this is how they cope these are how people cope that's another thing she starts skills. using fucking uh, on, uh, on, i can't i mean alcohol is a drug but now she's no she's, weed and that increases your hunger for most people like like you wouldn't believe so yeah right, and, well, and you don't want a salad when you're high you want pizza and cheeseburger and nachos let and me ask bullshit. you this Nia. let me ask you this let's just say you're dating me all right you, you know we've been going out for two years i'm in great shape and then all of a sudden the stress of the road I put on 60 to 70 pounds and start smoking weed. Now, you're going to tell me that you're not going to entertain breaking up with me. You're not going to sit there and be like, this is going to be the father of my kids. This is the person I'm going to spend my life with. This guy, he, he's acting like he's in fucking Wayne's World. And uh, Uncle Buck all at the same time. You know what? I honestly can't say that I would. If you all of a sudden, that's all you were doing with yourself, and whenever you weren't on the road, you were just sitting around and smoking weed and eating. You know what? You became full of like, shit. If I came home, imagine my pasty, freckled torso <laughs> with man tits. Right. My fucking navel the size of a half dollar now. Yeah. Smoking weed and just sitting there fucking, you know, that's going to affect my sex drive. And yeah, now I'm getting true. on top of you. Ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> Sweating all right? over me. Yeah. You got to get on top of me. I look like I'm pregnant. I mean, give me a fucking break. <laughs> Right? And then you're walking down the street and you're seeing all these other guys going to the gym. And, I would you're, like, and you're in the prime of your fucking life. Yeah. And you're going to pick a mate for the rest of your fucking life. And I'm already looking like I've worked on Wall Street for 30 fucking years. You're not going to sit there and have any second thoughts. Come on, you. I mean, I might not be as sexually attracted to you. That's for sure. But I wouldn't can stop, you just tear like, the band-aid off and just say what you're going to say? But I wouldn't be like, I need to, I, that's the other thing that I have How would you approach me? How would you no, approach me? No, but listen, this, the thing is, this, 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 is the problem, this is the problem that I have, especially with this whole letter. The fact that I spent all this money and effort on her, only to have her sabotage it and hide it from me, makes me seriously call our relationship into question. Why does that call your relationship into question? Because she's being deceptive. Yeah, because she's going through some emotional shit, but she's being deceptive about food. It's Listen, not like she's like cheating on. She's like, you know what I mean? I know she is. For him I know to take she it is. to make it to seem like, you know, oh, or do you really not love me now? Because you know you're not following this diet that we agreed that you would fall. Like that's not that's not a fair comparison to make on somebody. Like that's not. It's really not fair to do that. No, it's is it fair to do what she's doing? Well, it's, she's not doing it against like against him. And as as a way to hurt him, I know she isn't. So I, I you know, can't so you I, can't I, say is it fair for her to be doing that to uh, him? You know because something. She's not, this, this, this is not classic, what I like. But this is this classic fucking female thing. Where, where you guys are right when you're right, and you're right when you're wrong. Like you're acting like. You, Do you know, think she's doing this to hurt him? Well, why can't she be a little more mature and just be just say like, listen, why can't she sit down with him, 
and just level with him and let him know, just say, listen, I got to be honest with you. I know that you care about me. I know that you sat down and you had this, this conversation with me. And I know that I said I was going to do this and this and this, but I'm actually doing that. And I'm actually, you know, not going to the gym. And I feel bad that you're wasting your money and all that. And you're taking all this time to make a lunch every morning. How loving is that that he's doing she that? Should, she should do that. Yeah, all right then. She's not 100% free of guilt. The thing about it is, Nia, is that guys are guys and we talk like guys. And guys just get to the fucking heart of the matter. I don't like the fact, what he said, he looked at her bank statements from last month. She's been picking up fast food on her way home for like nearly every day. I got to tell you, Nia, that's a chick thing to do. Go through somebody's email and snoop. He snooped. It is. It's snoop. snoop. And now you like not, now you don't like that. Now what if a woman did? You probably would like, like it. I don't like. No, I don't. I she, hate when she people. had a hunch. No, I don't like because when people check stuff. I have friends who check, and I don't. I don't think it's smart to do. I think it's ridiculous. And also, it's like don't look because you oh. more than likely going to see something that you don't want. Well, to I'll say. be checking your emails later on today. <laughs> um, I have nothing to hide. All right, you can check so, all my emails. All right. So what what should he do in this situation? <sighs> Well, first of all, I should probably apologize for saying fuck you and calling you an asshole. Um, but yeah, you should just have sit down and have a talk with her and just say, I'm concerned about you and what's what's going on with you emotionally. Like, tell me now, what's going on. How does he deal with... Maybe when, we can like, when, go for a walk after work and you can tell me about your day. When he you brings know? up... When he brings up the fact that he snooped and looked at a bank statement. He does not need to do that. Well, let's Don't just, do that. let's just say he does. Because at this point now, his girlfriend can she's get... going to freak out. And she can get a lot of weight behind those punches now. <laughs> You're such a dick. Um, no, he should just say, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm worried about you because I feel like you're, you're going through some stuff and I tried to help you, but maybe it's not enough. Do you want to talk to me? Do you want to talk to somebody else? How do you... How are you feeling? Because she probably feels now shitty what, now, about herself. She probably feels terrible about now what herself. If she goes, She's gained that much weight. None of her clothes fit anymore. She knows how she looks. She probably feels absolutely terrible. And her one solace in life is that she's got this boyfriend who's home and he cares about her and he loves her. And she's abusing her. That's she's, not abuse. Don't she, throw that she, word she, around, she's Bill. Take, That's she's a strong word. She's don't, take, don't do she, that. She's taking abusing advantage. Abusing him. She's Stop taking it. advantage Stop of Stop it. She's taking advantage of their love. She's not. You're making this. That's what I don't. That's what but I'm you're trying also, to get but you, you to but understand. You're also, she's not trying to hurt him by doing this. She's hurting herself. You don't know her. You don't know her. I, and you don't know him. Exactly. So why are you right and I'm wrong? I'm not. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm giving you my opinion. Isn't that why I'm here? You really have a beautiful profile. You know that. Um, don't try to throw me off. No, I'm with that. Anyways, I appreciate that. But don't try to throw me off. All right. That was a legitimate thought, but I was trying to throw you off. A little bit. <laughs> no, listen. If. Um, I Listen, just didn't you, the fuck I was going to say. No, 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 no,
a significant emotional thing that needs to be addressed. So all that stuff that you did while you got a, um, this great bike and a gym membership and all that stuff to support, first of all, that should, that should tell you that a person is only going to change their lifestyle if they want to. Number one, that's the first lesson. That's with drugs or food or anything. Number two, that, that means you need to go deeper than just the kind of like, these are the things I that got you the do to get healthy. I got the answer right That means right you're here. either talking or you're suggesting therapy or you go to therapy to talk, to, talk about it or something. She probably needs to. If she's got like some sort of like eating I addiction, have the answer. food addiction or something. I got the answer. She's probably just fucking depressed. And he when you're needs, depressed, you smoke weed and you gain weight. Like, she's depressed. He needs... He's stressed out. He needs to sit down and decide if it's worth it. If this is... Does he love this person enough to ride through this fucking storm? If... If... If you're not, if you don't feel that way, then you should just walk. Okay? And then... Breaking her heart is better than marrying her when you don't love her. So just break her heart. The stress of that and the sadness of that, she won't even be able to eat that big king every day. And she'll probably drop like 15. Is he, has he stopped loving her? Because if that's the case, then he's call, I... He's calling their relationship into question. So and I, that's I, what I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Why? Because he's being honest? Why can't you fucking be honest? Why can't guys be these, these, these who we are? We, we are visually... You know what I love about f women is you, you fucking want to use that shit where visually attractive gets you a fucking drink or, or gets, you, gets you out of some shit. What do you mean, ugh? Like that doesn't fucking work. You want to use it when it works for you, and then you, you, want, to, you want to use that weakness when it's to your fucking advantage, and then when it's the other way, you want us to be these fucking understanding goddamn people. You want us to be guys when it gets you a free fucking drink. We want we want guys to love us whether we're like the hot body or we gain some weight. That's what we want. We want to not. Yeah, even, you want your cake we, and eat no, it. We literally. Want, no, we want to. We want, <laughs> we want to not be. We want to live in a world where we don't have to even fucking have this conversation. That's exactly. what we want. Yeah, okay? I want to be rude and fat. And, and, and no, selfish that's you. That's and you guys. shop Actually, and do whatever guys, I want to do you and guys I want are you to already still rude love me. and fat and disgusting and ridiculous and you get to do that. As but women me. can't do that. As you interrupt me, I'm rude. We have to be like the hot body, otherwise you call our relationship into question. Oh, so this one guy is everybody now? He's not everybody, but we're just we're talking about just a general uh, you know scope what? of thing. You're so, you're so, you just you just so said women shit. like to do this and women like to do that, like it's all women. That's what yeah. I do? That's what I do? Yeah, but I'm a moron. You're supposed to be a higher being. You're a female. We are higher beings. You're not. Trust us. You're not. We You're are. just as dumb as we are, just no. in different areas. No. You don't think so? No. Being a, being an emotional person makes you tuned in to things that you, as a male, with your basic fucking <laughs> basicness, can't understand. So we already are high. Well, and we well, can, like, carry children. We've got some spiritual level shit that you'll never understand. Exactly. And you know what we also have? We have some plow through some shit that you don't understand. That you don't understand. Don't you think because you need plow through some shit and emotional shit? finish a fucking thought. No. Can't you, have, can't you be Jesus a plow through Christ. shit and an emotional? You need both of those things, don't you think? Yeah, it's called the yin and the yang. But for some reason, you think your yang is better than my yin. And that's the fucking problem. And there's 50,000 shows on fucking TV. As much as you ladies complain about the images on TV, there's a zillion fucking things on TV that are telling you that you guys are right and guys are morons. Start with 90% of the fucking advertising when they show a man and a fucking woman in a relationship. Like that ridiculous one from a few years ago that I'll never fucking believe that they were actually... Where she's sitting at the computer and the guy's outside, finds a beehive, and literally sticks a broom handle up into the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And is getting stung by bees because he's a dumb guy and she has to sit down and handle the family business at the fucking computer. Okay? Please do the female, the chauvinistic version of that fucking commercial. What do you mean, do the chauvinistic version of that? When the, when the, have woman, the, guy, the woman's done? Have the guy figuring out the family business on a fucking computer as she's sitting there looking through a fashion magazine. or, or, or that's, that's not even at the same level of ridiculousness. What is the female version of sticking a broom handle into a fucking beehive? They're assuming that the woman is, is taking care of like the day-to-day run-the-household stuff, that the man and is he's too busy to, working to no, figure he isn't, out. No, so they're Go trying with the to, metaphor. So they're trying to appeal to a woman's sensibility so that she'll like the product. And no. then she'll buy it. That's, what about, it's, that's all like, what, what about it's the all metaphor? marketing. No, it it's not like... What, what about the metaphor that's going on there? That he's such a moron, he's trying to stick his fucking pole into any goddamn hole he can find. <laughs> That's not, knowing, not knowing he can get stung at any moment. Yeah. I'm getting herpes.
Okay, advice on men. Hey, bumbling Billy Boo, uh, I'll keep the question short to rescue you from the English language. But up, up, but up, up. I get it. I suck at reading out loud. He goes, I'm a 20. Oh, she says, oh my God, this is from a lady. Uh, I finally get a female to write in and I trash her right out of the gate. I'm sorry, sweetheart. She says, I'm a 24-year-old girl, and I'd like to know your best piece of advice of understanding the human male species. Many thanks, but at the same time, go fuck yourself. Well, I'm sorry. You've got to be a little more specific. Um, but I'll give you basically, generally speaking, um, uh, well, Jesus Christ, what, what do you want to know? I, I would basically, you, you want to learn how to communicate with them better? Um... Yeah, so you're doing the right thing. You're asking another person. This is actually a very smart question. Rather than sitting around with your female friends just going, I know, right? What is, th what is that? God. You sit there at a fucking wine bar, whining. <laughs> this is what you do. You go across enemy lines and you ask, you know, a traitor like me to read from the playbook. All right, how guys communicate. I can't say that we just say what we're thinking because we, we have liars and passive aggressive people and uh, meandering little man boys. But generally speaking, uh, the thing that confuses us the most, I did a bit, I can't remember if I did it on a special, but one time I was driving with Nia and I said, hey, I want to get a chocolate shake. We were going by this diner. And she freaks out. She's like, oh, my God, they make the best chocolate shakes. And I go, I know, right? And she goes, yeah. And she just goes, oh, my God, but they're, they're, they're so big. She just kept saying they're so big. And after a while, I'm thinking, like, yeah, like, fuck, how the fuck am I going to drink this whole thing? And then immediately just clicked on me. Like, it's like, they're not big. They're standard size. Wait a minute. She wants half of my shake, but she doesn't want to seem selfish. But she doesn't want all the calories of the full shake. So rather, but she doesn't want to look like she's taking away 50% of my good time. So rather than telling me that, she's trying to mind fuck me into thinking something that I drank a zillion times with ease is now too big. You know what I mean? So that's how you guys communicate. I don't know how we communicate. Because I can't just sit there and make it seem like guys are heroes. And where they would be like, listen, I'm trying to lose weight, so uh, can I have half your shake? Um, the only thing I tell you is you're 24 years old. Uh, you shouldn't understand them. You shouldn't understand guys, but it's hard for me to, I don't know what you're asking. Please write back. Please write back advice on men part two. Just do that again. Just fucking write back. Ask me something more specific and I can help you out. But it's great that at 24, you're actually smart enough to ask guys to explain. Um, uh, let's see. Best piece of advice. That is a great piece of advice. Uh, learn how to cook. All right, as stereotypical as that fucking sounds, I don't mean it in, the, as, as in a sexist fucking way. All right? I don't. Don't be a slob and learn how to cook. Would put you ahead of 80% of fucking women out there. Because for some reason, somewhere along, Edith Wharton or that chick who sewed the flag, making a guy a sandwich became this absolutely degrading fucking thing to do. Yet guys still have to hold the doors and, and fucking buy drinks. Like, why we don't find that sexist, reverse sexist, or whatever the fuck you'd call it. I remember one time I was downstairs. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I was doing some pain in the ass job. I was cleaning up something in the garage. And without me asking or anything, Nia came downstairs with this unbelievable sandwich she had made. Pickles, toothpicking it, the whole fucking nine yards. And she brought, like, a, a something to drink downstairs, too. And I stopped working. I sat down and ate it. It was one of the greatest moments of our relationship. All right? So that's it. some advice I would give you. Is guys are, are very, we're very simple. And by simple, I don't mean stupid before you get on your fucking high horse. Okay? It's like an old school engine. You open the hood and everything's right there. <laughs> Rear wheel drive, it's not turned to the side, jammed into the compartment, none of that bullshit. It's just fucking basic. You just do that every once in a fucking while. Guys will think, I have a keeper. And all you're doing is making a fucking sandwich. 
And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have the right to vote. It's fucking unreal. Cooking, and then you're not even cooking. All you're doing is just slapping shit together. You're building a little fucking food house. How difficult is that? That's what I, I don't understand. Like, I guess I kind of understand it, but like, cooking a meal for somebody is one of the greatest things you could ever do for them. All right, I'll leave it at that. So I would say something simple like that. This is how simple guys are. If you actually, every once in a while, just said, hey, you want a beer? And you actually got up and went to the fridge and got a beer and brought it out, put it in a fucking frosted mug. I mean, personally speaking, I'm ready to go paint the house. Because that little move there, I feel like a fucking king. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Very simple. You know? Let him head out with his friends once a week. If they come over and they watch the game and you're not into the game, leave. Go in the other room or be a good shit and hang. But don't ruin his good fucking time. Jesus, I'm on a roll here now. Here's another one. Uh, try to limit the amount of horrific shit you're going to drag him to. Now, he's, he's obligated to go to some of it, but he has to have, just set it up and just say, listen, there's a bunch of shit that you do that I'm not going to be into, right? Like tailgating on a golf course, peeing in a porta potty before, before a football game that you don't give a shit about. I don't want to be there for that. So I get to tap out of that, all right? And then the guy, he gets to tap out of like, I don't know, like what have I, I tapped out of one time, uh, Nia wanted to take me to somebody's birthday party. They were having some fucking, you know, we're all going to dress like it's the gold rush or the fucking prohibition era. It's like, I don't want to fucking do that. And she gave me shit, and I was just like, I don't want to do it. And she let me out of it. We laughed about it. I actually went there without a costume. I mean, I made a deal. We made a, we made a, we made a deal. I think I told this story. I'm fucking punch drunk. Yeah, I never know what the fuck I'm talking about. I showed up, and I didn't wear a costume, which was hilarious, because every other guy was fucking dressed like Charlie Chaplin. And I show up in street clothes, and they're looking at me like I'm a magician. And then I left early, because that's right, because I would have watched the Celtics were playing the Lakers in the finals that year when we beat them. And I would have missed it. If Nia wasn't so fucking cool. So that's, that's what I would do. And if you actually do shit like that, you know, you, you put yourself on this solid ground with the guy that you're with where now there's no reason for him to be an asshole to you or be mean to you because you're being so nice to him. It really kind of works that way. It kind of feeds off each other. That's the best I can do without a specific question. All right? So there you go. And, you know, fuck everybody who's going to say that, you know, what I just said was sexist. You know, go fuck yourself. I don't think it's, you know, you're on a date with your woman. You go and you open the car door for you. You still do that shit. If I can do that, you can go get me a fucking beer. Christ, it's a twist off. What, are you going to hurt your wrist? Yeah, you know something? That, that's going to be my advice. Stop acting like a kicker. <laughs> you know how much it fucking annoys me? That every time a kicker makes a tackle, he gets hurt. I just fucking, I just don't understand that. Jesus fucking Christ. Put some cream on it and get back out there and fucking throw your feet around. Okay. Drunk girlfriend issue. This is the last one on the, on the podcast. Hey, Billy Bob Burton. Um, I'm a big fan of yours, fellow Bostonian. Suburb guy as well, and I love the podcast. I have some relationship issues that I'd like your input on. If you would be so kind, you fuck. <laughs> All right, I've been dating my girlfriend for over four years. I am 26, she's 25. We moved in together in September 2013 because I thought things were going well. Well, we have some issues, and I'm not sure what to do. Besides the usual fights over things, where I think logically and present my side of the argument well with facts that are relative to the subject, and she rambles about how I'm a mama's boy and have a small dick. Um, well, yeah, I guess, in other words, you're probably right, so she's just capitulated and then I was just insulting you granted this is your version of it anyways he said my biggest issue is her drinking more specifically how she acts when she's drunk when we are drinking in public set, sitting not setting sitting with a large group of people she drinks too much and always blacks out this is typically not a normal thing it only happens once uh, every few months but over the holiday season it happened every weekend while at company Christmas parties, hers and mine, friends' houses, and while on a pub crawl. I have two big issues with her blacking out like that. One is that it's usually 
She only drinks excessively when other people, mainly her bitchy best friend, insist that my girlfriend should drink a lot, even though my girlfriend has a very low tolerance for alcohol. It's to the point that her best friend will say things to her like, if you don't take this shot, I hate you, slash, you're not my friend. Jesus Christ. And she's being serious. I have spoken with my girl repeatedly about how I feel that that's not a good idea or right to allow her friend to do that to her, and my girlfriend replies that she's not going to say no to her best friend no matter what. Jesus Christ. This is like a textbook codependent relationship here. Um, my second issue is that when she blacks out, once I get her in the, cab, the, the car or cab to take her home, she gets really quiet and starts saying she hates our relationship, she hates me, she hates living with me, she wishes we would break up, among other similar things. Once she sleeps it off and wakes up hung, hung over, she has no recollection of what she said to me the night prior, and she says that drunk words, they're drunk words and they mean nothing. Oh, God. I do not think that way. It legitimately hurts my feeling and his feelings, and it has happened so often recently that I've been weighing my options about whether it's time to end this relationship and move on. I'm not sure. I'm just being a pushy need to get over it or if I have a legitimate gripe here. Dude, you totally have a legitimate gripe. He says, I care about my girlfriend a lot, and until recently I was beginning to think about proposing marriage to her at some point. Dude, you cannot on any fucking level propose to this girl with this shit on the table right now. He said, I had planned it in my head that if we were going to live together for two years, then we had the right stuff for marriage. Uh, with all this drinking stuff, though, I'm not sure where to go. If you have any tips or advice, I'd greatly appreciate it. Go fuck yourself. Can't wait to see a new special in 2014. Hope you perform in Boston. All right. Yeah, dude. Um, first things first, do not on any level propose marriage to this woman at all on any fucking level. Um, what you have to do is you got to put your foot down. All right? You have to say... Both things that you brought up, provided you're being honest with me, uh, you are 100% in the right. And you have to just say, look, um, you can't drink like that anymore. And you can't have a relationship with your friend like that anymore. Um, actually, you can because you are a free individual. But if you're going to be, then I, I want out of this relationship. I'm not going to be with somebody who drinks like that and more specifically drinks like that because a friend is making a drink like that. And second of all, you know, I don't. I, I don't, you know, there's an expression out there that, what does it say? Uh, a drunk man's words or a sober man's thoughts? I don't know. I, I would, oh shit, this is Bartnick. Hold on one second. Hang on, hang on. Joey B, just wrapping up the podcast. I'll be outside in two minutes, okay? All right, see you. Um, yeah, so I would basically, uh, Okay, so let's just compartmentalize this thing, okay? If that first issue, just the drinking thing, I would just lay down the gauntlet. You, if you, if you want to be with me, and you, you know, I'm not going to be in a relationship with that going on. That's unacceptable. I respect the fact if you still want to do it, but if you still want to do it, then you're moving out or I'm moving out, and we're not going to be a couple anymore because I'm not tolerating that. And you're well within your right to do that. It's a great thing to say at 26 years of old to get some sort of self-esteem within a relationship and have some ground rules with yourself. This is your half of the circle. What do I want and what am I willing to put up with? Where is my line? You found your line and you tell her that that's where it is. You don't have to be a jerk. You don't have to get angry. Just say, this is my line. And I totally respect if you want to live on the other side of the line, I'm just not going to live with you doing that. Um, this other shit where she gets, she says she hates the relationship and wishes that you broke up. Um, if it happened one time, whatever, she does that every fucking time. I think those are her honest words. And I honestly would seriously consider getting the fuck out of that relationship. Um, I think you, you guys have both been in a relationship for a long time. You got into it when you were really young. Maybe she still wants to see, explore, see what the fuck's out there. I have no idea, but that is a major, major fucking red flag. Um, and uh, I don't buy it. And I also don't buy that she's 100% drinking like that because her friend is making her do it. Uh, I think she wants to drink like she Maybe she's drinking like that because she's not happy in the relationship. I don't know. There's a bunch of major red flags, and you are 100% in the right. You're not being a pussy. You're being fucking mature, and you're, you're saying what you want. Fuck this, dude. You don't want some drunk with some drunk fucking friend who then gets hammered and says they don't want to be with you. When you dream, is that your dream girl when you sit there in fantasy? Kick this bitch to the curb. I've had it with her. I'm not even in the fucking relationship. You could do better, all right? I'm not saying she's not the one, but she needs to grow the fuck up. Don't say it like that, but that, that's what I believe. And that's, that's my thoughts, and I'm sticking with it. Um, hey, Billy Boy, first time, long time. I got 
I'm going to get right into it. All right. Last weekend, I got a text from a former fuck buddy who found out that I had slept with their friend before we started hooking up. Oh, you know what? Go fuck yourself. All right. You're crushing ass all over the place. You don't need my advice. I probably need advice from you. That's only that's a secret goal of, of a certain percentage of guys is like, what if I can fuck her and all of her friends before they all figure it out? You know what I mean? It's sort of like an action movie with your dick. And <laughs> can I stick it in all of them before the bomb goes off? And, uh, and can I get out of town like fucking De Niro and Heat before when I see all of them coming up with the how dare you? Haven't you ever fantasized about doing that and you were so good that as mad as they were, they all reminisced about how great you were and then all four of them come over and be like, ah, we're all fucky at the same time. If you haven't had that fantasy, God bless you because you're evidently a way more decent a human being than I am. So anyways, with that, here we go. Um, he goes, she sends me, anyway, let, let me just refresh your memory here. Last weekend, I got a text from a former fuck buddy who found out that I had slept with her friend before we started hooking up. She sends me a pretty heated two-page text about how much of a dog and douchebag I am for sleeping with her friend, then fucking her the same weekend. Yeah, dude, go, dude, you're a legend. You're a fucking legend. What is the, dude, all you can do is just stand there with your hand at your sides, take the slap to the face. And just know that, yeah, you're a hero. Dude, you banged her friend and, and her in the same weekend? And you're, 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 you don't front a, a successful band? I mean, that's, that's you know, I, my, hats off to you, sir. Hats off to you. Anyways, he goes, now in reality, I had slept with the friend in late May and then starting hook, hooking up with the fuck buddy in early September. Oh, okay, so she tried to make it more dramatic. That's still great, dude. You, you, you seamlessly made the shift over the summer. You're still a hero. Um, anyways, he goes, to go into a little more detail, the fuck buddy had gone on several dates and fucked once three... Oh, I had gone on several dates with her and fucked once three years prior when we were both at college. But then shortly after, she lost interest and we remained as friends for the next few years. When I say friends, I mean the occasional text and seeing each other maybe three or four times. All right, so what is her fucking problem? What is the rule? Shouldn't the, shouldn't the second one be mad at you? Because you fucked the other one first. I don't, I'll never understand. I'll never understand. What, can any female, if you're still listening at this point, if I have any female listeners at this point, can you explain to me why that makes you mad? You know, because, I don't know, there was always like, there was always that girl that, like, you know, when I was growing up, like, I can't say me because I wasn't getting anything. I didn't get anything in high school. Big fucking goose egg. I would, my, my pussy getting career in high school, I was like the first year the Tampa Bay Buccaneers came in the league and went winless. <laughs> what was the name of their Gary Huff? Was that the name of their quarterback? I was the Gary Huff of, of pussy in, in, in high school. Whatever the hell. I can't even remember the name. His last name was Huff. was the name of their quarterback with creamsicle fucking uniform. I might as well have had a suit made out of that when I was in high school. Um, I, but anyways, there, there, were, there were those girls that like my drinking buddy crew, like three or four of them out of the five had all hooked up with her. And none of them were None of nobody was mad. Everybody high five. That's fucking great. That's, you know, we thought it was a great thing. I don't understand why they get so mad. You know what it is? Is I, I just think that they want to, uh, it's a big thing with them that it, that it has to be difficult. And, you know, and if, if they, I think they just feel like if you bang them and their friend, they just somehow feel like, maybe it makes them feel cheaper. That there's just, you're just fucking hitting... It's like you're a machine gun. You're just mowing them down. I think that they really want to believe that they're the only one in that area code. You know? That they're like, uh, that it's like gold rather than like pine cones. <laughs> you got to dig for it. It's a precious metal. They don't, they, they don't want to feel like that they're just like litter in the, in the gutter. Maybe that's what, I have no, I have no idea. But I have learned something in this. Fuck buddy is two words. 
This guy put fuck buddy together. Um, that's how much he's into sex right now. He's got, he's literally like the fuck is, is got the buddy part bent over and it's all one word. They are one. Um, so anyways, he said to go into a little more detail. I already read that part. He said, so fast forward three years and the friend of hers, that's the future fuck buddy said that we should hang out after the Sox game. All right. I'm getting lost in this with all my rambling. No, what the fuck? So you hooked up with a former fuck buddy. So now, okay, so this is when, when, when number two comes in before you went back to number one. All right, so fast forward three years later. Yeah, so she didn't give a fuck. So who she should be mad at is the second one. No, but it's been three years. You know, I really don't think anybody has a right to be mad here. All right, whatever. We should hang out after a Sox game. Of course, I see this as a green light because whenever a girl that you really don't know says we should hang out is codes for I'm down to fuck. Exactly. Did you hear that uh, guy with the fucking bassoon? You got they, they speak in code. We should hang out sometime. That That's literally, that's what that means. If they say, would you ever think of taking me out? That means they want a relationship. We should hang out sometime. That's what that means. Okay? And I'm not saying 100%. I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's looking good. You're getting waved around by the third base coach. Um, anyways. Where the hell am I? Oh, for fuck's sakes. Uh, I apologize, guys. When a girl says that, you're down to fuck. So, oh, so, anyways. So, we end up fucking. And she gets on a plane the next day to study abroad in Europe for the summer. Exactly. She wanted some shoving off dick. You know? Let me get a little last piece of America before I go over to Europe. Tremendous. Anyways, fast forward three months later, and the fuck buddy, all one word, says that I should come over some weekend to hang out. Green light. We bang, it's great, and we continue to do it until the end of the month when I fly back to the place that I now live. So a few days ago, I get the heated text saying I'm a dog, I'm a douchebag, and she thought I was a friend, etc. I say that there's nothing I can do or say to change what happened, and the only thing that I can say is I'm sorry if I hurt her and that I am an asshole. But my question to you, uh, Mr. No Relationship Psychology Degree Comedian, is am I a dog for what I did? No, you're not. You're not. And fuck these women who call you up and use you like a fuck stick. All right? They called you up because they wanted some dick, and you gave it to them. All right? You gave them what the fuck they asked for, and then she's going to turn around and get mad at you? And then you apologize and say, yeah, I'm an asshole? You're not an asshole. But you know something? I don't think you think you're an asshole because you're out there crushing it. You're just fucking saying what you know this girl wants to hear because probably six months from now she's going to fuck you again. Right? You're not an asshole. You didn't hit on the other girl. She said, hey, we should hang out sometime. Okay? She's giving you the green light. You know what I mean? You're a guy. You have to take that. You got to take it. Women don't understand that because they can get laid every night of the fucking week if they want to. They don't have to have any game. And they, it, for us, it's, it's, it's work. It's a skill. Okay? So when somebody, when it's, it's like you're in the wild. You got a free fucking meal. You're going to take it. You know? I learned that in Australia when I was looking at those poisonous snakes. And like, why does that thing have enough venom to kill 200 mice? Why does it need that much venom? It's because it's out there in the fucking, the outback. And out in the outback, food is scarce. So if you get a shot at something, you got to fucking take it down. And that's what the hell you did. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fucking dog. You know, it's like, you know what? Fuck you, lady. I'm a dog? Then, then you're a whore. If I'm a dog, you're a fucking whore. Did I call you up? Did I come around sniffing up your skirt? No, you called me. Because you wanted some dick, and I gave it to you. How about a fucking thank you letter? Dude, you really should have come at her like that. You really should have. And I got to tell you something. On some fucked up level, she would actually respect you. As long as you didn't call, don't call her a whore. All right? But she fuck she, so what, what is her relationship with you? You guys barely talk, and like whenever she's in a, a dick dry spell, she fucking goes over to you like your Hertz rental car and just fucking just rides your dick, and then you're supposed to be exclusive? And not bang her friend who's cut from the same cloth? Who wants to get plowed before she goes over to Europe? This is your fucking fault? You're the one who should feel used. You know? Neither one of them wants a meaningful relationship with you. Uh, you know what? This is what I say. Just don't even write him back. And you know something? Fuck him again. Just bang him again. Who gives a fuck? Next time you see her, she wants to give you a dirty look. Just like... 
I, I don't even react to it. What, 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 a, what a fucking, what a bunch of bullshit. And I got, I can't believe that, like, you, we don't have a relationship. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing fucking over and over again. Why don't I, look at me, I'm stuttering here. Do you know, the other day I was watching, uh, I was watching the Texans, when the Patriots played the Texans Monday Night Football, right? And uh, some lady at the, at the, at the, was watching with us, and she started giving Bob Kraft shit for having, like, a 35-year-old girlfriend. And for those of you who don't watch football, Bob Kraft was married forever, had a family, and his uh, wife, unfortunately, uh, died of cancer. You know? So she dies of cancer. You know, he stuck by her side, did the whole damn thing, and then now he's got a new girlfriend, and she's 35, and women are mad. They're upset about it. They're upset by it. And I, I, don't, uh, I don't get it. You know? If I die of a disease, I, I, I don't want fucking Nia to be sitting here like some spinster. Go on, go have a good time. I'm dead. I don't give a fuck. You know? Unless I'm a ghost and I'm sitting there watching it, then I wouldn't like it. <laughs> but I would just fly away. Why would I sit there watching it? You know, start haunting them every time they were going to have sex. I wouldn't do that to somebody. I just don't understand why, like, um, it's not like he went out and got with, like, a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old girl. She's 35. 35. At 35, if women aren't married, they're freaking out. Right? They, look, I, you know what I love? I just love that they get mad at the guy. And it's like, what about the girl? Why is she with them? Okay? If he's some sort of, like, you know, oh, he's just there because he wants a hot girlfriend. Then what about her? She's just there for the money. So then it, it works out. Doesn't it? I don't know. Whenever, like, shit like that goes on, that really taps into the cynical part of me, which, you know, if you listen to this podcast, God knows it doesn't take much. But um, sometimes I just, I just think that it almost taps into that fuck buddy thing. They just don't want to know how easily that they could be replaced. Yet, they want you to feel, they don't give a fuck if they, if they try and make you feel that way. All those stupid songs, Beyonce, that, that to the left, to the left, you know? That whole song is like, yeah, just take your shit, get the fuck out of here, I'll have another guy in two seconds. You're, you're that easily replaced, you know? And they, they love those songs. Those songs, are they consider them fucking empowering. But then when they see a successful guy with a, you know, a nice closet full of shiny ties and his own sports team, when they see that he can still fucking pull down some 35-year-old ass, they get mad. They start judging his character. Even me and my mom, we had that discussion. Well, I just don't think that that's, I just... I'm sure that there was somebody in their 50s that he could have... Who the fuck wants to get with a 50-year-old? Even if you're 70. You know? I don't fuck, you know what I mean? You know, you're starting over again. If you got a fucking old car and you trade it in, you don't trade it in on a fucking another old car, you get a new one. You know? You fucking ride that thing into the ground and then you get another one. I don't know. I'm just saying I don't have a fucking problem with what the guy's doing. Anyways, wife's weird sex store purchase. Oh, jeez, jeez. Here we go. Wife's weird... Um, dear Bill, me and my wife have been married for two months, and she has been less involved and willing to have sex. All right. Right there. And she got a weird sex store purchase. I don't even need to read the rest of this. Sir, have it annulled. Um, anyways, he goes, I thought the honeymoon phase was just ending and started to adapt. It's been two weeks since we last had sex, and Friday, while taking out the garbage, I found a bag to the local sex shop. Okay, that's it. I don't need to read anymore. Just get it annulled. Go your separate way. I didn't know what she bought, and since we haven't been having sex, it was a puzzler. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Dude, it's this whole fucking thing. It's over. I then started snooping. Okay, that's it. While she was at work and found a dildo in the closet. I know women have them, but this one wasn't your usual dildo. Okay, that's it. Wrap. Nothing to see here. 
Dude, this has more red flags than the than the fucking opening ceremony of China at the Olympics. <laughs> okay, it wasn't your usual dildo. Jumping back in. We're losing a lot of tiles. I think we're going to burn up here in fucking re-entry. Um, it was the shape of an animal's penis. All righty. See you later there, lady. It was a fun two months. I'm not even, you can keep everything. I'm just going to take my T-shirts and my shoes and a pair of pants. It was close to a foot long and weirdly shaped. Wait a minute. They don't make animal dildos. What, what does an animal penis even look like? I don't even, I've seen an elephant fuck. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I've seen dogs bang. Anyways, it was close to a foot long and weirdly shaped. I have kept quiet, but I really want to confront her, but don't know how to do it without hurting her feelings or opening a crazy can of worms. Please help, Bill. All right, dude. You know, you, you, need, you need, if you're not just going to walk, you really need professional help on this one. All right. I mean, how, how, I don't know. What, what do you do? Do you take the thing out of the trash and then just leave it on the fucking coffee table? And then she walks in and just you're just pacing. Hey, honey, how was your day? And you just fucking, what, what's this? I just found this in the fucking trash. Huh? Which orifice were you shoving this in? I mean, there's no fucking way to, how, how do you even bring that up? Listen, dude, I'm going to tell you this right now. Your wife has a huge... Dildo. No, your wife has a <laughs> your wife has a huge skeleton. Something. There's something gigantic going on. Oh, God, I can't. Got to stop saying gigantic and huge. She's got a big secret, bigger than that fucking giraffe dildo you found in the fucking garbage. Um. You're, you're two months in, dude, and you're already not getting. Sex is already a fucking issue. All right. Now, it sounds like you really love this woman, the fact that you're actually still willing to work this out. But as an outsider with no feelings, no, no heart, no broken heart on the line here, um, you know, I, I think you just got to walk. I can, no, you know what? I, I, what would I say? I would just say, I'm literally sitting here right now, guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing my eyes. You know when you do that with one hand? You know that move? I'm doing that right now, trying to think of how to fucking, how do I bring this up? I would take the fucking hippo cock, <laughs> and I would, I would put it in one of those uh, big brown bags, if it can fit, from Macy's. Whatever you got to do. Maybe like one of those, you know when they plastic wrap like a Christmas tree? I would find one of those bags, and I'd stick it in that. And I would just say, honey, I need to talk to you about something. All right? And I would sit her down. Dude, fuck this and fuck her fucking feelings. All right. See, I had to get past the shock here. All right? Just sit her down and say, listen, I'm not judging you. I'm, I, I, you know, I just need some honesty here because this is a gigantic, huge fucking gorilla dick that I found in the trash. Okay? You haven't been having sex with me. What is going on? What is just tell me what is going on? I'm not going to tell anybody about this other than this podcast. I'm not going to judge you. Just level with me. Do you? Is this why you wanted to go to the zoo the other day? No. Just you got to get it out there, dude. You got to get it out there and you have to hear her fucking story and you have to be supportive both for her feelings and for you. For the fact that you deserve to know the fucking truth about this before you spend the rest of your life with somebody who's going to bang you once every two months while secretly wanting to fuck a tiger. Or what? A, a fucking grizzly bear. Dude, there's no, they don't make animal dildos. And I swear to God, you fucking assholes, if there is a website, don't send me the link because I'm not looking at it. I don't need that on my hard drive. I'm not looking at it. Dude, you have to sit her down. Okay? And, and you, you have to bring, you got to bring in that zebra dick. You, you just have, <laughs> you have to do it. 
You got to do it. You got to do it. You owe it to yourself. All right? And as much as it's going to be embarrassing for her and everything, it's going to help her out. Because I bet that there's a part of her that she, she doesn't like herself. That she's sneaking around and starting to live this lie and all, or, or, or whatever the fuck is going on. I don't know. I would also bring, maybe bring it to the sex store and ask somebody what this is before like, you make a complete ass of yourself. Because God knows, what if it's something else? What if it's like a fucking, uh, you know, you know, like those wood things that's on an old staircase? Um, I don't fucking know. Uh, all right. On a banister. Uh, dear Bill. Um, Bill, I met you after a show in Pittsburgh. The black guy with the hot Latina. We laughed about my shoes matching my outfit. Welp, my beautiful girlfriend for the past three years has a little bit of insecurity, insecurity issues. Um, a lot of those absolutely gorgeous women do. And you know why it is? It's because their level, I'm without even reading this shit, the reason why I think a lot of them are fucking insecure is because, because they're beautiful. And that goes away after a while. So the clock is just fucking ticking. You know, if you were just some regular douchebag like me, there's no pressure going back to your fucking high school reunion. I mean, the, the expectations are so fucking low. You know, it's easy to surpass them. Like, oh, geez, he didn't get fat. This guy's awesome. <laughs> but if you're a fucking hot chick, it can just, it can only go downhill. And I also think that they have the same insecurity a rich guy has, where a rich guy's like, this woman's just with me because of my money, not because of who I am. I think that they have the insecurity that this person's just with me because of my ass and titties. Hi. All right. For some re odd reason, she feels the need for me to prove to her that I love her whenever we're in a public setting. So recently, during some Christmas shopping, uh, she got upset that I wouldn't hold her hand as we walked through the mall. She proceeded to catch one of the one of her spicy Latin attitudes with me. Um, see, now, if you were white and you said that, and you said that on TV, you would have to apologize for nine weeks when you would lose your job. Why does it have to be spicy? Are you saying that Latino people are like their peppers? Um, all right, I'm going to stop commenting and just plow through this. Okay, so I handle handle uh, the situation like a G, parentheses, gentleman, and completely ignored her ass um, until we got into the car, and I finally had enough of her telling me how I don't love her and how she wants me to love her. Oh, I don't love her how she wants me to love her. And how unaffectionate of a man I am. And you know what, dude? That right there is probably how you got this hot girl. Because you weren't the first guy sitting there with your tongue hanging out of your mouth. You acted like you didn't even give a fuck. Which fed into her insecurity of like, oh my god, is the expiration date hit? Am I not hot anymore? Um, look at me commenting again. All right, I swear these bitches are so unappreci un unappreciative. <laughs> this is funny you call them bitches. Why can't these bitches understand how much I appreciate their ass? Uh, every weekend, Bill, we do something. Dinner, movies, plays, etc. But because she has a vag, she has to find something to complain about. I think it's because women have this trait where they feel a strong need to be miserable. No, dude, you know what's going on? Is you're spoiling her. You're taking her to dinner, movies, plays every fucking weekend. She, now she's come to expect it. You know what I mean? It's just become part of a routine. It's not special anymore. So now you have to do something extra special because special isn't special. You know? That's what I, I you know what? Oh, gee, I'm going to whisper this shit. We were up in San Francisco, right? I lit up my credit cards this Christmas, all right? My girl had a great fucking Christmas, all right? It's three days later. We're up in fucking San Francisco. She wants to go shopping. I'm like, for what? You didn't get enough, you know? So she knows I'm right. So what does she do? She tells me she wants a goddamn candle. Okay, because it's not expensive, but she'll still feel like she got something. Because I don't know what it is. They always got to. They always got to get stuff. There's always got to be some sort of a goodie bag. And you know what? I wouldn't get it for. I wouldn't get it for. I go. You're done. No, I'm not. It's over. My credit cards are still glowing. I'm not getting you shit. And you know, she's cool as hell. So she just kept laughing because I was being unbelievably rude and I was being really loud. I was just joking around. And uh, but still. That's the thing. And I just kept saying, I spoil you. I'm, I'm, you know, we're shutting it down for a while. You're not getting anything until Valentine's Day. You know, you want something now? I'll get you a little bag of Fritos. What do you think about that? Maybe something to wash it down with. <laughs> <laughs> and then what they do is they immediately get mad. And then all you do is you don't take the bait. 
They want you to get mad so then they can turn it into a fight about something else because they know you're fucking right. All right? So let it be mad. All you got to do, you just got to stay fucking calm. Well, let's see what this guy does. Uh, so anyways, he goes, so we are driving along the highway, leaving the mall, and she's still bitching. And finally, I tell her, you know what? If you don't like the way I express my love for you, then step off. Uh, got to read that quote like a black man. I can't. I'm not even going to try to. Uh, so immediately, uh, I actually read that. I read that like a douchey East Coast white guy. Then fucking step off. Uh, how did you? If you don't like that motherfucker, then step off, bitch. How was that? Was that good? I know it wasn't. Well, then don't ask me to do it. All right, plowing ahead. You know what? I might have like a fucking substitute black guy for when black guys write some shit in here so you guys can read it the way you're supposed to say it. Other than that, you're getting fucking a cracker ass read and you're going to have to live with it. All right, so immediately after that, I said, after I said that, this bitch starts throwing these accurate and quick ass Pacquiao combos. She's punching you. Mind you, I'm doing 65 miles per hour down the highway trying not to hit the guardrail while at the same time getting this crazy bitch off me. Luckily, I didn't crash my year-old Mercedes. <laughs> this guy's hilarious. Come on, dude. Do you love this girl or is she just another accessory? Um, my year-old Mercedes with the Corinthian leather. Uh, I get pulled over. Get pulled over or, God forbid, seriously injure us. I mushed the hell out of her and held her face against the passenger window. Totally acceptable. Totally. Ex the mush is the gentleman move. You can't punch her. You just hold her head up against the glass. You know, so the people on the other side get to see what her face looks in a funhouse mirror. <laughs> in order to decrease her reach while steering the car on the highway and absorbing her manly combos. Got to give it to her. The bitch had a mean right. Um, so if you can picture me driving, I can totally picture this, dude. I've lived this. Um, so you can picture me driving down the highway in a bright red Mercedes. So, okay, not I didn't ever had a Mercedes. It was more in a, a 83 Ford Ranger with black vinyl seats. <laughs> um, swerving like some drunk in and out of lanes, staring with one hand and stiff arming the shit out of my girl as if I'm posing for the Heisman Trophy. After she stopped beating my face in, she had the nerve to say, I hit her and hurt her worse by pressing her face against the glass. Are you fucking kidding me? This bitch almost took both of our lives. Long story short, as soon as I was able to come to a safe and complete stop, I kicked the bitch out and haven't heard from her since. This was three weeks ago. And it's all for the best. That type of girl can never be satisfied, which is something I've learned the hard way over the past three years. But this was the straw that did it. So my question for you is, was I wrong in this situation, and do I owe her an apology? No and no. All right? All you can do is break down your game plan. All right? This is where you fucked up. You took the bait. All right? She kept bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching, trying to make you mad. She was. Tr she got you to do exactly what she wanted you to do. So that gave her an, an excuse to do what she wanted to do, which was fucking flip out and yell. All right? That's what they do. When they know they don't have a fucking leg to stand on and they know they're wrong, what they then try to do, you know, not all of them, and not in every situation. But when they're, they're not going to be an adult and just say, you know what? You're right. I'm being fucking crazy right now. I apologize. Okay? When they're not going to take that adult route, what they then do is they just push your buttons. And they just try to make you mad. And they just keep pushing you and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until you then flip out and say something fucking crazy. Like, well, if you don't like it, then why don't you get the fuck out? And then they flip out. All right. So what you got to do is in the future is you, you just don't take the bait. You got to recognize, you know, they're doing they're doing the fucking Dennis Rodman thing to you. They're baiting you into a penalty. That's all they're doing. OK. And the ref always sees the retaliation. That's basically it's the same fucking thing. So in the future, just don't get mad. It will drive them up the fucking wall and you won't believe the amount of arguments you're going to start winning because in their effort to piss you off, they're going to cross like 10 other lines. All right. Now, when they cross 10 other lines, if you take the bait and then go even further down the road, that's all that's remembered in the end. As you then try and piece together who said what, when. But if they go, if they cross 10 lines and you don't take the bait, they are 10 lines beyond where the fuck they should be. And you got them dead to rights. And you just have to maintain your fucking cool. Now, 
getting back to this other shit is you do not owe her a fucking apology. All right? It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely childish. And you can't, as an adult, expect somebody to not hit you if you're hitting them. All right? She's basically asking you to extend a common human-to-human -human courtesy that she's not extending to you. So she can go fuck herself. You definitely... I don't know if you made the right move. Now, I don't know if you walk around calling her a bitch and that type of thing. This is you just trying to be a tough guy. Going, then this bitch said this and this, you know, this bitch said that. Uh, that's another thing. Don't go around calling her bitches because that, that, that just kills your argument. Don't ever call them bad names, all right? Just hold your ground. Don't lose your fucking cool. And let them go through their whole little fucking histrionics trying to get you to take the fucking bait. All right? And as long as in the relationship you admit when you're wrong and you sincerely apologize, they don't have a fucking leg to stand on when you're right. And you're going to start winning arguments and you're going to be happier. There you go. All right? And other than that, I don't know. Stop dating psychos. Bill, wife left. Bill, so I got a text from my wife a couple weeks ago saying she had taken our dog and her things left and we're getting a divorce. Wow. She gave you a text message, you know. That's kind of the way to do it. In a selfish way. You know. <laughs> do you know I know somebody who did that? I knew somebody who was in a fucking relationship forever. And I guess they just didn't know how to get out of it. So here's an option for people out there, men and women. And sir, this has nothing to do with you. This just reminded me of this. So this fucking guy, his, uh, his woman went on a cruise or went on some sort of wine tasting thing or whatever. And he, are, he, I guess he knew that she was going on this trip. So before she left, he already found another apartment, signed a lease and all that type of shit. So she leaves... I mean, she was leaving for like two, three days. He had another buddy of mine went over there. They packed up all his shit and fucking moved it out to this new place. And then, you know, he just lived in that place until the day she was coming back. He came back to the apartment. She comes home and immediately sees half the shit is gone. And he just dropped the bomb like that. And said, listen, you know, we need to talk. I'm not fucking happy. <laughs> and when I tell you this fucking woman flipped the fuck out, flipped the fuck out, like went absolutely fucking ballistic. And <clears throat> and I, I always wanted to ask her why. What was it? that made you flip out to, would you would you have flipped out less cuz she she didn't even go into the the surprise of what oh my god crying but went immediately to anger and i think it was because he was already out and there wasn't going to be any sort of closure slash i can torture you and be a total cunt to you like he sidestepped all of that and just made this clean ass fucking break. You know, Dennis Miller, that's the news, and I am out of here. <laughs> that's what I thought when he did it. And I don't know why I always smile when I think, because that's the thing, you know, if you're going to break up with a woman, you just know. I mean, I mean, I never had to break up with a girl I was living with. I can't imagine that fucking hell. And this person. I mean, that, that's one way to do it. Um, so if you are stuck in a relationship and you don't know how to fucking bring it up, you just don't know how to do it, that's one way to do it. Because when they come home and you're sitting there, but you, all your shit isn't there, uh, that's, that's the conversation has begun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Anyways. So getting back to this poor bastard. He goes, her rationale was that she always hated me. Oh, my God. Forget the eight instances of cheating, three post marriages that I three post marriage that I tolerated just because is as good of a reason for her 
to leave as any. Wait a minute. Back up here. Wait a minute, dude. She cheated on you eight fucking times? Five times before you got married? I mean, dude, what? Come on, man. You didn't see this coming? All right, I'm going to save judgment here. Uh, he said, forget about the eight in instances of cheating, three post-marriages that I tolerated. Uh, and then he writes in quote, just because is as good of reason for her to leave as any. Um, here's where you pummel me, but she was my mom's, but she was at my mom's bedside with my mom and I when my mom died. Okay, I didn't realize... Dude, you didn't write this well. I didn't realize to her that nothing. I didn't realize to her that was nothing but her way in. I didn't realize that to her. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's, what? That she went to that, that that was her way into your life? In my grief, I didn't notice she went full Andy Dufresne, just chipping away at my sense of self. So she would fuck around. So when she would fuck around, I thought, well, no person in the world will hang on to me. So this is better than being alone. Fuck it. Oh, dude, come on, man. She and I have been together for nine years, married three. My problem is that as a 26-year-old, birthday was yesterday, none of my friends can relate, and my thousand-yard stare oh, can relate. And my thousand-yard stare at the bar just seems to be harsh. Seems to harsh their hipster PBR buzz. Dude, this is the most difficult fucking thing I've ever tried to read. Um, dude, you're only 26 years old. Get the fuck out of this thing. Go to the gym. Is that your problem? Huh? You got a little dough around the fucking middle? That's it, dude. Read up on nutrition. Get, get some fucking self-esteem, man. This is ridiculous. This fucking cunt, you know why she hated you? She's probably, one of the reasons she hates you is because you're not sticking up for yourself. This fucking, oh, dude, I, I, you know what? I'm not going to yell at you. You've already been through the fucking ringer with this one. I'm sorry you ran into something like this. I'm sorry. I don't know who the fuck your, your male role model was when you were growing up. Didn't build you up more, but they obviously didn't fucking raise you right, and now you got to do it, okay? you got to build yourself up, man. You can't fucking, you can't fucking have something like this going on. You're like William H. Macy and fucking uh, Boogie Nights. You can eventually fucking shoot her in the driveway, fucking your friends, and then go blow your own brains out. You don't want to be that guy. Fuck this woman. He goes, I've tried to get back out there with some people I know, but when they tried, when they tell their stories from college, all I think is, I wonder if John McCain gets this mad when people his age tell stories about Woodstock. All right, now where do we make the leap there? What, their pussy stories? And you're pissed because you missed out on that? Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic as, for the most part, my life is much better. My friends think I'm exaggerating because they saw us together, and my response is that people saw Elizabeth Smart out in public too, and she wasn't, and she wasn't fine either. What the hell do I do? The last time I was single, texting didn't exist. I couldn't drink legally. I've lived with my parents. I lived with my parents. Uh, you got the point three examples ago, but I keep typing. Uh, I thought maybe as a comic, when you started going on the road and didn't know people everywhere, it may have been a similar vibe. Yeah, dude, like you're you're starting from ground zero. You're totally beat down. You're 26 years old talking about like you're 50. You know? You're fine. All right? Oh, wait, so you went there for fucking, what did you say, eight or nine years? Let's do the math here. Text my wife, blah, 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 blah. Eight instances. Oh, so you were there for nine years. So you got together with this girl when you were 17. So you were, still, you were a baby. All right, I get it, I get it. And you stayed with this girl and you never cheated on her. She cheated on you. And all those years of college when you should have got your game together, how to talk to women, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, dude, that's, you, you, can, you can make up ground real quickly here. You're only 26 years old. Um... You just gotta you just gotta get yourself out there. Now, I mean I wouldn't suggest just going out to bars. Look, if you wanna fuck a woman, go out to a bar. Do that. If you wanna meet somebody nice, then I, I would I would be I would definitely look elsewhere. 
Uh, do you have any hobbies? Do you like sports? I would join some sort of uh, fucking... I don't know what the fuck is the word. What's the word when they let guys and women play together? You know, I joined some shit like that. Take a fucking cooking class. Just something, you know, something where the, where the good girls go to. You know? But, you know, if you just want to go out and get laid, who gives a fuck? You, what you got to do is you got to get over being getting rejected. Just go out to a bar and just talk some shit. You know? Don't go out and get plastered and use that as your fucking courage. Just go out there and just talk some shit. You know? And just go out there and just say, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what's up to ten different women tonight. All right? Or if that's too overwhelming, make it five or four. All right? No, no less than four. All right? All right? With no, no pressure on the results. And just go out there and just fucking strike up a conversation. See how long you can keep it going. And, and just, you know, whatever. You're going to be nervous. You're going to give a fuck. But with each one, you're going to give a shit less. And the less you give a fuck, the more relaxed you're going to be, the funnier you're going to be, the more you're going to attract them. It's, it's literally when you give a fuck. When you give a fuck, you're scaring them away. When you care, <laughs> you know, you'll be fine, all right? But it's, you, you got to grow up and stop embracing this fucking, uh, this depressive shit because it's also going to make you an angry cunt. And you're going to fucking hate women and you're going to push your friends away and you end up being alone, all right? Unfortunately... You fucking, you wasted nine years of your life with some cunt. And you got fucking married, okay? But it wasn't a waste because now you know what you don't want. All right? So that's it. But for the love of God, do not get into another goddamn relationship. You got to make a pact with yourself. You're not going to go from a nine-year one, three-year marriage to fucking jumping into something else. You got to stay single and figure out what the fuck you want. You might not want it. You might want to, like, not even go out to fucking bars for a while. You know? Let's go to the gym. Hit it like a fucking madman. You know? And fucking figure out what, you, what you're looking for and then where it should be and then go in that direction. Do that, all right? Not everybody's going to be the guy who goes out and bangs a fucking 100 women. Who gives a fuck? All right? At the end of it, if you find fucking love and you find the person you're supposed to be with, you what? Okay? So, uh, whatever. There's my fucking two cents. Did I say the F word enough? All right. Dutch girlfriend turns out to be a hooker. <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad for you, but I don't feel bad for you. Provided you didn't get an STD <clears throat> and you didn't knock her up. Oh, Jesus. All right. Let's put on some latex and wade into this one, everybody. Dear Bill. I live in the Netherlands. Um, I've been casually seeing this girl for a few months. Her family is rich. She's a pro fashion model and looks like Bridget Bardot. I've heard that name, but I can't picture the face, but with a name like that, right? She's got to be all stuck up huh? with her fucking perfect jeans. Anyways, yesterday she told me that for the past few months she's been working as a whore. How fucked up am I that I actually find that sexy on some level? Um, high class on account of her looks and profession. 2,000 euros for three hours, 10,000 euros for 24 hours. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Some guy slobbered all over you for 10,000 hours. How quickly did you have to break up with this girl? I shouldn't make fun of this. This is terrible. Why, why is she tapping out? She's taking the easy way out here. You're already a model. Everybody's rich. Is she getting written out of the will? She's freaking out. Like, what do I do? I've been rich my whole life. No, I'm not going to be. Oh, I'll suck it. Uh, well, why don't I read? When I continue reading here, the usual clientele is rich corporate assholes and idiots who save up and think paying ludicrous amounts of money will get them a better orgasm. I have absolutely no interest in seeing this girl anymore. She's not going to be the mother of my children. Yeah, no, she's not. Um, yet she's only told four other people. If I split after her telling me the secret... She'll feel like a piece of trash and view me like some Puritan asswipe. My real reason for running away is you can't ask her to quit, and if she does, she'll only resent you for it and be at risk of relapsing any time. I got to get out. How do I do it? Well, well, what you have to do is stop being concerned about her feelings. What about your feelings? What about the fact that this woman is fucking around on you? What about the fact that she could give you an STD? What about the fact that she 
that a relationship is built on trust and she has this giant fucking secret, arguably the biggest fucking secret you could have. You know? I'm not judging anybody in this fucking story. Because I've been you and I've been the whore. <laughs> I'm just saying. If I'm the whore, I, ex I, accept to get, I expect to get fucking dumped. You know? There's plenty of man whores out there. You know? That's what happens. Um, yeah, dude. No, you got to stop thinking about it. Like, it's weird. Like, this is what you have to do. You, you have to get over the... F um, you have to be selfish in a fucking relationship to end up getting what you want in life. All right? And you have to have parameters... And, you know, to use the cliche, you know, to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. That's basically what you got to do. And this is not your fault. Um, I don't know what happened to her that made her choose this horrific fucking profession. But it's not your fault and it's not your job to fix it. And um, you said it in your last two sentences. I got to get out. How do I do it? Uh, so I guess your second last sentence, you said it. I got to get out. So... You just have, you don't have to be mean about it. You just have to say, listen, that's just a uh, unbelievable <laughs> piece of information you just gave me that you were keeping from me. And uh, uh, Jesus Christ, you just got, you got to use the, the cliche, you know, relationships built on trust. You know, I'm not judging you. Uh, I wish you weren't, I mean, you know what, there's a part of her that might want, is probably, I don't even tell you this because you might run to this because it's easier, but like, you know. I don't know. This is what I would do. I would break up with her and then also try to get her help to get her out of it. That's what I would do. And by getting her help, I would give her information where she can go. She needs to handle this on her own because you have feelings for her and you know that this isn't the mother of your kids. And if you just keep hanging around with her, you're going to get sucked back into it again. And now you have to trust somebody who lied to you at that fucking level. And um, that is just a, a fucking train wreck waiting to happen. All right, dude? I would go get myself tested for everything on the, under the fucking sun. And um, that's it. That's it. And she, if she cries, I mean, that's part of it. And she brought it on herself. It's not your fault. All right? And I'm not trying to be mean or whatever. I mean, I don't know what happened to her that made her do that type of shit, but that's not your fault. Okay? So why don't you go out there, find a great girl who isn't a whore on the side, and go live your dreams. All right? And you know what? You're going to dump her, and it's going to hurt for a little while. Even though you knew it was the right thing to do, it's still supposed to hurt because you're a human being. You just got to push through that. Go to the gym, right? Have a couple of belts at the bar, but just stay in it. Stay in that pain, and you wait till that pain's gone, and then you fucking go out and try to find somebody else. In the meantime, you rub one out. All right. <laughs> All right, advice. Bill, since you've, uh, you've given great advice on relationships in the past, I'm wondering if you can do it for me. I've been with this girl, this lady of mine, for years, and we're planning on getting married. Oh, jeez. Uh, we're both only 20 years old. I'm a college dropout since I'm certainly a more blue-collar individual. She is going to college to work with children. We both work full-time jobs, mine being the night shift in a warehouse selecting orders to go to individual stores, stressful and physically challenging. Uh, here's being Hers being a phone-answering day job from 8 to 5, Working with customers in a graphic design shop, boring and easy. Okay. He's defined his job as stressful and physically challenging, and her job is boring and easy. Never underestimate how tedious a boring job can be. I'd rather do your job, walking around breaking balls. Look at his fucking shirt, dude. Fucking queer. Drive by on the fucking forklift, right? You guys start a softball league, you have a great time. Rather than sitting there having your ass fall asleep in a cubicle, Listening to people bitch because they can't figure out how to work there, set it and forget it. Grass is always greener, my friend. Why don't I shut my fucking pie hole and read the rest of this? All right. Since we started dating, she seemed to do everything to keep me interested. Uh, make me breakfast in the mornings on some, on some days. Go to concerts with me when she didn't necessarily like the music. Um, the whole works. But I've noticed that she without, she's without question just been lacking in the care department. She just sits and watches TV every night and eats and complains about gaining weight. I come home in the morning to do dirty dishes, to do the dirty dishes that piled up in the sink from her having friends over while I'm at work for the night and get yelled at for not cleaning them when I saw them sitting there, but I had no part in making them dirty. Dude, what the fuck? You can't have that. She leaves clothes laying around every room in the house, and that's not even how uh, she is with me. 
she has seemed to develop some kind of self-righteousness where everything that she, where everything that she, yeah, dude, you, I, I really got to proofread these people. So many spelling mistakes. She has seemed to develop some kind of self-righteousness where everything that she s says throughout the day should be my main concern and I should go out of my way to make her life easier. I do her college homework. I take care of the $2,000 dog I bought for her. I work on her car when, when she nearly runs the damn wheels off the thing, and I do chores for her family she volunteers me for. Dude, she has your balls in a little, that you know that little engagement ring you bought her? If you bought her, yeah, your balls are in there too. The next part is the icing on the cake. She goes as far as to dictate what time I have to go to bed and wake up in the morning. Um, e uh, evening since I work at nights. Uh, what, what I can and can't spend money on, who I can hang out with, what days I can see friends and require me to call her every time I arrive at work and text her in the middle of the night when I get off work and request her, and I request her to do nothing outside of what she does on her day-to-day -day routine. To sum all that up, I feel like she's forcing me into a cookie mold guy when I actually let her make her own decisions like some strange thing called an adult. All right, I'm going to stop right here, dude, because this is just going to be more fucking misery. All right. This is, this is what I, I've said this before on the podcast. You have to, I don't give a fuck how good the woman is that you're with. You really have to be careful because all this shit you see on TV where women are just constantly, there's all this fucking information out there about how guys are assholes to women. There's just reams of it. And there needs to be because guys are assholes to women. So women, I think, are more aware or at least they should be more aware because they got all these fucking goddamn shows with either from one to four twats sitting around bitching about guys and all the shit that we do. But there's no show on TV where you have four guys just sitting around a coffee table, you know, drinking some hot cocoa with some pillows and wearing sweaters and their favorite shoes, talking about, you know, not losing yourself in a relationship. That's what you've done here. All this shit that she's doing is your fault. Okay, and what's great about being a guy is you can blame the victim, which is why we're better problem solvers, all right? This is your fault. This is all on you. You don't like any of this shit. You have to sit down and talk to her, okay? You, you, you're not required to call her. You can go to bed when you fucking want to go to bed, and you can just sit there and tell her, you did those dishes, you clean it up, okay? Now, here's the point. This is the key with broads. This is what you got to do. You can't be mean. There's no reason to be mean here. There's no reason to yell. There's no reason to be angry. Okay? All three of those things is what she wants you to do. Because the, cause she know, she's going to know she's fucking wrong. If you, if, you, if you made the dishes dirty and every day you're telling me to clean them up, you treat me like I'm fucking Alice on the goddamn Brady Bunch. Everybody knows that that's fucking wrong. So what women do when they're fucking wrong is they try to make the argument about something else. All right? So she's going to do that anyways. So, but you're going to make it easy if you're angry and you yell at her and you call her fucking names. So what you got to do is you got you to keep, keep your fucking cool. That's what you got to do. Keep your fucking cool and say, listen, I worked all night. I don't think it's fair that you tell me to come home and I have to do these dishes when you made these dishes dirty yourself. I don't think it's fair to me to come home in the morning and have a sink full of dirty dishes that not only you, you and your friends made dirty. That's unacceptable to me that you want me to wash those. That's unacceptable. I'm not doing it. You have to wash those. I'll wash my dirty dishes. I'm not doing that. All right? And then, then let her flip out. Let her pout. Let her slam the fucking cabinets. Let her not fuck you. Just don't back down. Rub one out. Who gives a fuck? It's just an urge. You've already banged her. You're not missing anything. Who gives a fuck? But don't get angry. All right? And then just do, do to her what she did to you. Just... Just reclaim that territory. You're not doing that. You're not doing that anymore. All right? Start with the fucking dishes. And then start with this. I'm not in, you know, you can actually tag that argument. And just say, now that we're on this topic of discussing things, I'm going to go to bed when I want to go to bed. I just, it makes me feel like a child when you're telling me when to go to bed. I know when to go to bed. All right? Now that I've aired two complaints, how about you give me a couple of, you got anything you want to say to me? And just stay cool. And then when she hits you with some shit, if you don't like it, tell her, you know. I was going to say to go fuck herself to, you know, I don't know, what, whatever. You know what? Fuck that last advice. Just go with the dishes thing first. It's unacceptable. That's it. If you bring up something else, then, you, then it looks like you have all this resentful shit, and then she'll try and spin it like, well, if you're feeling all this, why didn't you fucking say anything? Because you're a cunt. 
that's what's going to happen. And then you're going to lose the argument. And the next thing you know, to make up for it, you're not going to be getting any pussy from her. And you're going to be doing a whole sink full of fucking dishes that you didn't dirty. All right. Moving on. But, sir, you have all the power there. Just keep your fucking cool. Um, friends Unholy Wedding. Oh, dude, I was doing so great on this fucking podcast. I don't know. It's somewhere I lost the fucking momentum. I lost my mojo when I was talking about why I laugh, you know, at people with the fucking crutches falling down a flight of stairs. I don't know why I got into that. Um, friends Unholy Wedding. Bill, I got a problem that I don't think I can go, go to my friends with. A friend of mine is getting married. I've been good friends with the guy since we were five years old. We are now 23. He's getting married about a year from now. He has selected me to be the groomsman. All right, I'm guessing either you fucked his wife, future wife, or she's banged, you know, 70 people or is fucking around on him. That's what I'm guessing. Um, or she's into the devil. One or the other. This has to be why this is an unholy wedding. All right, he's getting married about a year from now. Good, you got time. He, he is uh, selected... Sorry, Nia just was calling in. She's going to kill me. She's calling from another fucking country, and I just shut it off because I had to. I got to finish this fucking podcast. You're putting the podcast ahead of me? Yes. Um, he's getting married about a year from now. He has selected me to be a groomsman. This means I have to, to pay for a flight to attend the wedding. Furthermore, his bachelor party is being, you cheap motherfucker. This is what it's going to be about money? All right. This means I fucking hate. Oh. Hang on a second. The lovely Nia, everybody. Nia. Hi, I'm hey, listen, I'm doing the podcast. Can I call you right back? Oh, okay. Say hello to the podcast listeners. Hi, podcast listeners. Tally ho. I'll talk to you later. Bye. See that? She had a fucking hard day, and I'm not there for her. What a piece of shit. All right, let's get back to tightwad here. And I have to buy a tuxedo, you know? Uh, a rent one. Uh, this means I have to pay for a flight to attend the wedding. Furthermore, his bachelor party is being held in Las Vegas, and I would also have to pay for this flight as well as other expenses of a bachelor party. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue. I'm a college student, and saving me approximately $1,000 this would cost would be, st uh, would be stressful, but it would be worth it to see one of my greatest friends get married. Okay, so you're not a cheap fuck. You're just having money problems. However, my friend has often lied to and cheated on his fiance. Oh! I didn't see that one coming. Why didn't I guess that? There you go. There's a whole new fucking... Jesus. Uh, I'm not judging him. I, dis I disapprove of how he treats her. This guy's actually a good shit, and I actually called him a piece of... Whatever. I judged you on your first couple of sentences. What are you going to do? He goes, I disapprove of how he treats her, but I don't get myself involved. He sleeps around and hides from her the fact that he smokes pot and drinks heavily on a daily basis. I don't know how she hasn't noticed. She's pr probably because she's a sweetheart. Sweethearts always end up with fucking dicks like this. She's never smoked or cheated, uh, as far as you know. I don't understand why he doesn't find a different relationship, but again, I don't get myself involved. The problem is I can't imagine this marriage will last very long, and I don't want to pay $1,000 for a sham marriage at a time when $1,000 is like the lottery to me. I'm actually offended that he's asked me to do all of this for the wedding and thus spend all this money. I cannot imagine asking any of my friends to throw away that much money on something I didn't give a fuck about. Should I decline to attend the wedding? Any advice would be appreciated. Uh, I don't know if I can go to our other friends with this one. Um, <clears throat> all right. There's, as always, there's a million different ways you can play this. There's two options, three options. All right. One, you just fucking bite your tongue and you just go to the goddamn wedding. And think that, all right, even though it's going to fucking blow up, maybe he'll learn something from it. And then, uh, you know, by the time he's 30, he'll grow up and you guys can actually be friends again. Two, you fucking, did I say there was three? I already forgot the other one. So we, there's only going to be two here. <laughs> oh, I am the, why do you guys listen to this? You know, you know why? Because it makes you feel better, doesn't it? It should. Good. I, I feel like I'm serving a purpose now. Um, just sit the guy down and be like, dude, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, what's up? What the fuck are you doing? Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean, what am I doing? I mean, what the? why are you getting married? Because <laughs> I love her. Where is this going? Dude, 
You're fucking everything that moves. I walk slower when I'm around you. That's how much shit that you're fucking. Do you understand me? Do you understand where I'm coming from? And you're asking me to go out. She doesn't know your booze. She doesn't know that you smoke weed. You know, I, this is a thousand bucks. If you were actually, you know, this is like me flying to go see the fucking, uh, I don't know, go see the Padres versus the fucking Colorado Rockies. What is the fucking point? You know? You're, you're, you're a piece of shit. This marriage isn't going to last. And what's worse is you're doing it in front of me, and then I, I got to sit there and have a conversation. You know, I got to figure out what part of her face I'm going to look at because I can't look at her in the eye. You're dragging me into it. Ah, Jesus, this is bad advice. I mean, you got to at least don't say it that way. Just be like, listen, I don't have $1,000. I just don't have it to go to the marriage and then it, to go to the wedding. Start with that, and then if he gives you shit, just say, oh, that's your other option. Just say, listen, I just don't have the money. And you bite your tongue, and you look the other way so you don't see them, the train wreck that's going to happen. That's the option. Or you can just come clean and just say, listen, dude, I love you to death. You're my buddy, but what you're doing here, this is wrong. <clears throat> All right? You're not being fair to her. You're not being fair to me. And, yeah, you're fucking, you're screwing yourself in the long run. So this is what you want to do. Go do it, but I don't want to be a part of it. All right? Yeah. So my guess is uh, your best fucking option as far as, like, the least amount of drama is to, uh, and mental trauma for yourself is to do, the one I threw there in the middle, where you just say, listen, I just don't have the money. Dude, I can't believe I'm supposed to be your bro, bro. It's my wedding, dude. I can't believe, dude, I can't believe you're fucking everything that moves and you fucking smoke weed and you booze every day and this girl doesn't even know. How about that? And you're acting like you're not doing it even to fucking me and you expect me to stand there. You understand that? You understand that I realize that you're fucking everything that moves right now and you're going to go marry this girl? And I'm going to have to sit there and watch you toast this girl. I love you. You're the, uh, the, the blood that pumps through my heart. That bullshit, i got to sit there staring at my fucking lasagna. You know there's going to be lasagna. Anytime you got to cook for more than fucking ten people, they just make a big tray of that shit. We have a meat base. We have a vegetarian. Isn't that big fucking silver tray? 